Thank you for tuning into the Seabros Fishing Podcast. We have two returning guests on this episode of the podcast. Captain Mark DeCabia is back with his good friend and first mate aboard the Rebel, Brian Shark Yunkin. If you haven't listened to the previous episodes with these guys, make sure you do. Mark has decades of offshore fishing experience, and he and Shark make a hell of a crew. In this conversation, we talk about everything from Northeast cane fishing to who Mark considers to be legends in the fishery. It's always a pleasure to sit down and talk with fishermen of Mark and Shark's caliber. Without further ado, please welcome Captain Mark DeCabia and Brian Shark Yunkin. Welcome to the Sea Bros Fishing Podcast, where we follow three words of wisdom. You can't catch them if you don't have a hook in the water. Always trust your instincts. And the last, you'll just have to keep listening. Stay tight. So Shark just came from Panama. Last night. You just came from catching the Olympic the Olympic of all species. The Atlantic eel with spears. <laughs> Sails. <laughs> it is like it's nice being down there. I just it's different. It's a lot of effort. I, for, it's fun. It's I, different. I respect the guys that are down there. It's a team sport. I, I do. And the guys that do do it down there are some of the best guys, some of the best crews around. Mm. You know, you got uh, John Louie, you just won on Sandman. I mean, they're down by two fish with 15 minutes to go, and they catch a quad in the last 15 minutes to win. I mean, that's – talk about a team sport for a couple hundred thousand dollars. You got a – Andrew on the fish on, he's hard charger and already sap and Carullo and there's a lot of good guys now. So. Mark Decabia, Rebel. <laughs> <laughs> Sail fisherman? No. You know. <laughs> no. What, yeah, I what? can hold your own though, I bet. <laughs> no, I, 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 I could catch him. I did a lot of sail fishing and I uh learned some a lot of tricks from Brett and got to fish with Ray Rocher growing up and a lot of good guys, but I can catch them when it's time to count, but it's I wouldn't say it's my uh, forte. Yeah, <laughs> you know, but it is addicting when you when you catch a lot in one day and you want to catch them. It's it catches on you, it grows on you, but it's a lot different than the fishery that we have in the Northeast. Yeah, what's like the deal there with like trying to figure out where the fish are? Is there like a theory behind it? You have every day, you know, obviously Florida, you have an edge that is usually pushed in from east. You know the. And it is from, goes from about 90 out to 250 feet. And it's basically a green water edge to a blue water edge. And that's where obviously all the bait congregates, uh, where there's a current change, where there's a blue water change. And that's where the fish are going to sit on one side of the edge. Yeah. And obviously it's rough conditions. And the rougher you have it, uh, the better off the, con- you know, the biting, they're going to bite. Uh, is it just rougher in general or is it? I know Florida's pretty rough. I'll yeah, give them yeah. that. Like you could be four or five miles of, off the beach, and it could be horrific. But is it specific wind direction? Uh, you want north wind, due north, yeah, and you know you want north current, you know, car, you know, running up. So it's basically running right into it, so it stands straight up. And when it gets rough like that, you have something a condition that the fish turned in. We call them tailors, where you look up the wave and here they come surfing down sea, and that that's what happened last week. With that big bite, you know, they were all tailing down sea. You had a swell and wind and, you know, big current, and here they come. So north running tide, they're using swell to yep. move, and then they're feeding into the tide, basically? Yep, they're feeding into the tide, and they're surfing down sea, you know, catching every wave, and that's where the bait is, and it's I guess it's easier for them to feed like that Makes when sense. it's rough. Yeah. You know? But rough conditions, it's, it's tough for them. It's... Uh, it's hard on the boat. It's it's a very, like I said, it's a team sport. It's just different than our fishing. It's just, you know, we look at it differently, and then they look at us like we're out of our fucking minds. <laughs> yeah, because you know, they're like, ice fisher. Yeah, like, <laughs> but it, not even that. Like, yeah, when yeah. It, they're like, it's cold out. I'm like, cold? <laughs> like, we have 25 other crazy conditions we have to deal with. You know, fog, wind, rain, you know, obviously they have it too, but we're sometimes 120 miles off the beach. Yeah. We're not, you know, six. And I always said, like, 
Like, oh, it's so bad. In one hour, we could jog home. Totally. One hour. We could put the boat in gear. When you're in, like, I don't know, I don't know, Lydonia or East of Beach, and you got to be like, oh, it's 16 hours home. Great. Yeah. You know? Yeah. Um, just very, like when we fished good. on Georgia's. It was the same thing. I remember being out there when Brett... Who had a very good podcast? Uh, <laughs> Brett, that's right. an inside joke yep. here that I just love. Oh yeah, Brett, that's not your eulogy. Okay, <laughs> you're not getting old. Cut the shit. All right. Um, but there was times that I was out there, and Brett was there, and we were there. For, like I said, he was there for seven days. We were there a couple of days, five days, and then it would get really rough. And you could only go four or five knots, so you were better off staying out there. Yeah. Until, you know, it lightened up, and then you could be able to make time coming in. What was your most memorable day out there? Memorable day? Uh, I mean, that whole first year, like Brett said, uh, I remember Brett uh, talking to him after he did the first trip, and me and Evan Millis, we had the head hunter, we were on our way. When they first got there, they called us, and me and Evan literally assembled as fast as we humanly could. I drove the truck. He drove the boat alone from Montauk after coming from New Jersey and getting out there and no one's there. And we're like, okay, are we even in the right spot? You know? like, we've never been there. And, and everyone at that point was already on their way home because mm. it was so fast. And Evan, we just stopped the boat and we're just like looking around. There's like three shearwaters. And I'm like, oh, we just drove 20 hours and we're here and there's nothing here. And just like Brett said, there was like piles and piles of fish, like 200 fish must have come under the boat. And that whole first year, 2010, we never even put a sinker on. So it was, I remember I literally took a herring and just fed it out of my hand. I remember I peeled it off 30 feet and it just ripped out of my hand. I'm like, oh, you know? <laughs> <laughs> and then from that moment on, I, you know, we did this pretty much as I think we did 19 trips and, you know, with three a day right through October on a little Mitchell Cove, 36, yeah, 37 Mitchell Cove. Uh, Where are you leaving out of? We're all living, let's say we're all living in Sacquatucket. <laughs> okay. Uh, living at a Brax restaurant and whatever we could offload, but it was definitely a, a camaraderie there. There was some of the best guys on the planet Oh yeah, going in and out and just watching people fight and fit didn't matter you just you want to break one off break one off you want to just 220 280 300 didn't matter that whole first year there was fish that have never been seen humans yeah. they were all the big you know they weren't all huge ones but they were the big dumb ones there were like scallop eater or drag or fish where you could just let out you know 530 extra hard and with a 7698b and gaff him in the head you know like, <laughs> yeah but <laughs> it didn't matter. I mean, uh, what we used, but there was just at first light would be crazy amount of fishing. And, you know, it was just the whole thing with that was just timing. So you were there at first light because it would be a big bite right at first light. You try to catch at least two and then you usually pluck one more on 10. Hopefully you get to dock before midnight, you know, another 12 hour steam and then back out. Yeah. Were they all just grubbing ground fish, or did you see, like, epic surface action as you, well? You just saw them, like, kind of like what pogies do. You just see them, like, kind of milling on the surface. You're <laughs> like, oh, look over there. There's, there's 300 fish just, just hanging out, you know? like And, like, they were never disturbed. It's crazy. You know, and it was, uh, it was pretty nuts. And that was the year I was getting married, and I remember I'm, like, texting my wife, like, because we didn't have sat phone. There was only a sat phone, so I wasn't ever talking to her. So it only when I have the service, she's like, you are going to be home for the wedding, right? I'm like, I think so. And I remember <laughs> getting in. I got in like early that morning, jumped to my truck, went home, got married. I literally was at such a ripping hangover after my wedding, <laughs> like kind of coming to. And then I had to catch a ferry to meet Evan back up there because he was on. He didn't stop. He just kept fishing the whole time and, and jumped back on the boat. And I remember, you know, a certain period, it was it was just nuts. The whole the whole thing. It's an experience, you know, I've been very, very lucky. I have a lot of different experience traveling all over, but that's something that came and described. Probably to, won't. To, I mean, it may not happen again. No. no. I mean, you could go out there and see unreal fishing. Mm, you yeah. could, but you're not going to be able to keep them. Right. Um, you know, and, and obviously sustainability of the whole species is very, very important. We've seen the best, but it, it kind of, 
this new kind of fishing that has developed is very, very tough, you know, on everyone. Yeah. You know, if yeah. you can't, unfortunately, if you can't cook it, stab it, sell it, you know, most people don't want to be involved. Post it on Instagram. Post it on Instagram. <laughs> yeah. Like That should have been first. <laughs> yeah. Like, yeah. You know, most people don't. So he's, he's all right. He's good. Respect the, the industry. Like I was a little kid and I got to go up there, you know, used to wait just like you guys did wait 12, 15 hours for a mark or then tied with slack and here they come and finally get a bite. Yeah. Now it's like, you just let a live bluefish go and you can literally go anywhere. We, we have fish outside our inlet that we've discovered in the last pretty much year that we can go catch at will now. It's we, crazy. Yeah. yeah. Is and anybody the fishing them or is it? Oh kind yeah. Of like no, yeah, yeah, oh yeah. Yeah. We just, yeah. but we're on an Island. So unless you have a home for it, there's not, a buyer or an okay. offload hmm. it's more of a pain yeah, it's just let them go i'd rather watch them swim yeah you know um or you know no one wants a 700 dresser you know yeah, <laughs> no one, yeah. No one wants- no. some of those dragger fish were enormous yeah oh, they're seeing pictures of i don't ever want to deal with one ever again no uh, that big it took us two days to yeah we we kept one of the ones uh and we ended up cutting it up and we cut up a 600 pounder and Remember me and Shark in the cut room for literally just felt like we were locked in there like in a meat locker. <laughs> two days. Was two like, full oh days God. flaying this thing. And I'm like, who would ever want to do this? And I said to my boss, like, oh, maybe we'll go out and go get another one. I go, absolutely not. <laughs> you know, you're the bad guy. You know what I mean? I'm like, we're, we're on our knees cutting the thing. You know, you need the samurai sword. Everything. You know, you need everything. The, the steaks of- off a of fish that big. We got a few from a fish we broke down in PEI. Like fucking quarter the size of this table. Yeah. If the, you know, remember the Flintstones? They used to put <laughs> yes, that thing yeah, on the yeah, side yeah, of the yeah, car. Yeah, yeah. If you can imagine the Bronto sized <laughs> loin, you know, and I remember I'm like, Shark, here, hold the loin. And you're going to like hold it. And <laughs> not light, it's 150 fucking pounds, <laughs> yeah. you know, and you're trying to hold on and manage it. And you're like, what the, ah, yeah. you know? And then here, and then you got to go through your phone and be like, come get this thing. I don't care. It's on my porch. I'm not delivering it. You know, it's so much meat. And it's too much. It's meat. way too much meat. Yeah, it's yeah. gross. Yeah. I'm like, okay, I, I'm, I'm done with this. And that, yeah. that tuna smell, oh, I'm sure, dude. you know, you get some, gets on your hands. It. I can't even eat it. Yeah, I don't eat tuna until really the fall. Yeah, like, yeah. I'll have like a poke bowl or make something, but it's like only if we catch a big Same. eye. And, and I'm like, that's about the last thing. I want like a skirt steak. And I take enough <laughs> for one meal home if the charter lets us take some meat home. Yeah. That's it. That's all I need. Yellowfin's a little different for me, though, because we don't get to eat it all the time like yeah. you guys. See, it's it's not like I'd rather eat bluefins raw. So it's like, obviously, we, we only get to eat it a couple times when we're going blue, but yellowfin's and the big eyes. and mm. Yeah, big eyes. Yeah, we try to eat a, a good amount of them, you know, yeah. but... Uh, it's uh, big guy's good. I've only had it a couple times because usually you're selling them and there, all that. There, there's good ones. We've had some good ones, just like anything. We have had good ones. We've had bad ones. You know, the ones are like, wow, that was delicious. You know, um, obviously, wah- wahoos, whatever else oh, you're gonna, wahoo. yeah, whatever wahoo. else you're gonna eat. But sailfish. Oh. Yeah, no, no, no <laughs> sales. <laughs> I ate a sail. I know you did. It was, actually wasn't bad. Pacific. Tail wrapped and died. <laughs> they, they eat sails in the Pacific, you know. It's, yeah. it's a fish, you know. Yeah. I, I, I say it to everyone. Like, a, a skate is a perfect example. It's probably the ugly, you know, an ugly fish in the ocean. You know, it's served in every five-star restaurant in New York City. Yeah. One mm-hmm. of the few fish that's a Michelin, you know, a, a skate, you know, something that's yeah. 30 cents a pound. Disgusting. Disgusting. <laughs> and it's like, it's okay. Garbage fish. It doesn't taste like a scallop, so let's just stop with that. <laughs> yeah. I cut hundreds of thousands of pounds of skates in my life monk fishing they, they taste nothing alike you know i don't know <laughs> where that myth came from but that's the pretty much misconception everyone's like oh they cut scallops out of it. like i don't know how they would even make this thing into a scallop the meat looks nothing alike no or those I'd are imagine it would cook a lot different too yeah, yeah. there's like a, a stringy type meat then there's like a steak type meat and it's nothing nothing alike mm. so that's but, awesome you know, obviously the fishing has just gone better and better and better. Uh, every year we keep saying, all right, when's the pinnacle? But it does show the management has worked of, of certain size, you know. <laughs> but I'm sure you guys wonder all the time too, like, all right, we see the super big ones. Right. We see the uncatchables. We see the 100 inchers. 
where are all the 65 inchers? Where are all the 60 inchers? Like it's weird. They come through in spurts. Like was it two last year or two years ago? We had the troll bite. Yeah. And that was just a shit ton of like 50 to 57 inch but fish. It was 10 days. Yeah. 10 days long. And then they were kind of oh. gone and they were down in Chatham. Yeah, we didn't have any. Yeah, we don't we, get any of those any size of, fish. Yeah, we, all, we, we only, used to, right? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Really, there used to be a bread and butter. It used to be south of the Coimbra in the springtime in June. Hmm. To It used to be a whole month that you could go troll them. And it was very good for like a guy starting out because you can go 30 miles and catch tunas. Isn't yeah. there a pot of fish south of you guys, though? Like, aren't they like the Jersey guys getting into them? Oh, yeah. The, there's a big popping, jigging and popping type crew. And those, that's that whole area from... Texas Tower, um, all through the Chicken Canyon. So there's like a gap now. There's definitely a gap. Yeah. Uh, huh. And then you cross a line basically south of Montauk, and then it just turns everything size large. Yeah. yeah. What were the eels like down there the last year or two? They definitely have stopped since yeah. they, you know, I don't, yeah. I don't want to start political yeah, yeah, wind yeah. farms, but once they started drilling and disturbing the bottom, the eels don't set up. And the same goes for our monk fishing. The same goes... For all the gill netters, you know, it's definitely changed the way we fish and how we fish. And um, obviously, you know, whales, unfortunately. Yeah. You know, so. but A couple more just died, right? Yeah. Yesterday? Yeah. You know whose house that was? Isn't that Matt Smalley's house? <laughs> that's, 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 yeah. that's Mr. Smalley's house. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Mr. Smalley's Under house. The yeah. Yeah. Under the dog. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. That's yeah. that. Oh, wow. yeah. Oh, yeah. It's insane. Oh, yeah. That was a good conversation, you know. So, do you think those things will ever be like Louisiana? Uh, you know, I'm not gonna say it's probably not because unless the water gets there, what happened? I guess in Louisiana, the the water's always there. It's always semi warm where mm -hmm. most of them are. Um, so I think that's a totally different fishery where the you know I've talked to uh, a lot of guys there and. You know, they said those big Allisons they catch now are 60 to 90 feet in the green water. Mm -hmm. So it's not a... Yeah, it's same... like October in that muddy, nasty yeah, water. right now. Yeah, right, right now. now Blake's yeah. railing them, you know, and they're catching them casting. They're learning from us how, you know, we catch them up here and, mm -hmm. you know, and they're adapting to using, the, you know, that type of stuff. Seems like it's like a steady pick when they're doing that. Yeah, they catch It's like... not like... 15 no, they catch, like, catching yeah, one, a couple a they day. They catch one to three nice ones a day that they land. And they couple days, they catch a lot of 40 to 80s that you don't really see because they don't yeah. probably see that advertising. But right. um, but it's it just our fishery has just changed. I mean, um, but going back to the inshore bluefins, we were leaving the tri-state this year. And uh, obviously, we were all well... Very well hungover, you know. <laughs> Rip, actually, ripping hangover. And, um, Sharks still hungover. Yep. We'll get back yeah, into yeah, that yeah, in a second. Yeah. And my boss goes, oh, can we go catch one? And I'm like, I guess we can. You know, like I was, you know, we could go do whatever you want. You know what I mean? It's your boat. So, and, uh, so we go make bait. And I'm like, all right. I'm like, oh, I got to get all the giant stuff back out. So bust out the old... You know, 180 liters and whatever I got. Would you catch bluefish? So I'll, if that would have been a, an organized plan, okay. that would have been, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. this is not an organized plan. <laughs> this is this is just, let's go catch one. And I'm like, oh. and I don't like being, not outgunned, but I don't want to be late to the party. I want to be organized. I want to be yeah. there. If we're going to go, I want to be there at 4.30 in the morning. Right, same. Yeah. You know, just like you guys. You, yeah. You're off the dock at 3. You're anchored up. You already got bait. and. Mm -hmm. Let's go, and you're gonna get your bite in the first hour, you know, on the first morning. But nope, we're here. We go. I remember it was like eight <laughs> fifty, because really great start. We go make bait. We get there. Everyone's like, it's over. I'm like, oh god. Now I'm just gonna sit here, and it's August, and we're gonna bask in the sun. And, you know, water's seventy eight degrees south of Block Island. There's people fluke fishing right next to us. <laughs> One guy yelling at us to get out of his fluke drift. You know. <laughs> And I'm like, oh, here we go. You know, now I'm already, I'm angry. We've all been on the boat for five days. We didn't place. I'm just pissed off because I'm a terrible sore loser. And I'm like, now the baits start dying. And I'm sure Shark and Jimmy, 
see me start flaring my hands, going fucking crazy because the feet's dying. I'm getting angry. My boss is looking at me. I'm like, ah, I'm screaming at everyone. Everyone knows not to say a goddamn word. And I'm like, just looking. let him go. Just yeah, let him go. I remember so, Jimmy and Shark. They were whispering to each other, and I was, I was calling them both out. I'm like, what, what the fuck are you talking about? Why are you talking about me? You know. And the bait's dying, and I'm like frenzying out. I'm racing, going back and forth, and then some guy like with his jigging rod hooks up right next to me. Now I'm completely coming unglued because I'm like a fish I actually know how to catch. Yeah. And, and this guy in a pro line, nothing, nothing against pro lines, but he just. <laughs> Have this, you know, catch one right yeah. next to me, you know, fight it. Of course, they lose it. Things probably trailing around 300 yards of spectra all yeah. over the ocean. Now. Oh, yeah. I like <laughs> race down to another spot, make my bait. Everyone, you know, like the guys can't catch the bait quick enough. <laughs> so I literally rip the rod. And and now someone, he's bait. Oh, yeah. I'm bait. I, I am. And driving. You know, yeah. Yeah. fishing, driving. I'm like, no, you got to catch him like this. You snap the rod. You keep. So you every time you reel a mackerel up, you have five mackerels coming in. Every time. You know, so less drop. So we black out the pen. I hassle off down there, race up you know, the helm. And we're, you know, we're going 33 knots. It's uh -oh. only a couple of miles. <laughs> Everyone's thick. No one's saying a fucking word. And I like drive up to the first whale. I mark like 20 of them. I'm like, all right, f f this is it. Like, no one touch anything. I'll set out myself. And I remember I set the balloon rod, I handed the shark, and I'm setting the down rod out. And I'm like, oh, there's one off the bottom. Like, s smash a sinker on the bottom. And definitely the, you can see the fish saw it on the way down, sinker hit. And I'm like, I watch a sinker just go slack. I'm like, all right, little fella. You know what I mean? You know, suck <laughs> that one down. You know? I got you. Uh, uh, I busted out some old saltwater hooks. Oh, you yeah. Know, the oh, yeah. Tinos, I was like, no. Nope. Shows don't exist. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> no, they don't exist. And uh, no, Brett, you can't have any more. And I remember I'm like, I watch the sinker slack and I'm like, oh, you're mine. You know what I mean? I just let it bounce. I'm like, oh, keep bouncing down there a little. Keep choking. I just threw the drag up. And we caught like a nice 85 incher and a couple minutes, you know, wasn't a couple minutes, but 40 minutes standing up. That's sweet. Um, yeah. Sick. Yeah. So it's a perfect size fish for standing for, up. For standing up. Yeah. I, I, have this, <laughs> I have this aspiration of catching one like in the air because it's shallow water. Yeah. Like I want, oh, it's what really want. Well, I'm not going to reel it. I'm not going to make shark reel it in. But, uh, <laughs> you know, I, I, I want to see up. like, no problem. <laughs> obviously, doing a lot of bill fishing, learning how to like drive a boat differently. And, and you know keeping certain tensions on it and slacking the fish off like i really want to see if we can catch a a big one in shallow water quick like less than 10 minutes definitely can yeah yeah if you get them to eat and, the right uh, less, and less and than 10 minutes can. no but if and you, you definitely if can you have the right angle, like, yeah, yeah, yeah yeah like there's you can not get on them yeah there's not many people in this room he shark fights every single thing and i'll say not many people fights as much stuff standing up than he does yeah he fights every single fish over and over and over no matter where we are um so I'm like, all right, I think we could do this. You know what I mean? Then I'm like thinking, I'm like, what happens if we hook these like 115 inches and sharks could be like crippled to the back of the boat on a 70. But I think you could, you know, if you know driving on it, like don't pull super hard. I think sometimes you guys realize that when you pull super hard, they pull harder. Yeah, you know, for sure. And I then, think if you got the right fish that wanted to stay up, you could definitely do it. Yeah. The problem is when you get a fish that doesn't want to stay up, even in like, What's the, what's the shallowest we've been? 60 feet, probably? 70 yeah. feet? Yeah, we did a 120 in 80 feet of water in Canada and took us three hours. Yeah, I'm sure he's just going to race around all over. The hardest, the hardest on part him, is like even in pinning yourself in the corner, you still the don't... The rod's loaded up. The it's, yeah, the whole, the whole time. So like that, that 50 yeah. to 75 foot mark is so hard to fucking break on a fish that's But that. what you're saying is keep him so light that he might just resurface. Well, yeah. I, like that's when you, sh you should learn. Like I want to do, obviously do it on a, a closed day if we're not going to keep the fish. But you yeah. could learn like, oh, let me just throw the reel in free spool or yeah, back it off. What's he do? Yeah, yeah what, what, what happens? Like right. I always thought like when we fished on George's, because we did it a lot. If we hooked doubles and we even hooked a triple, we threw one reel in free spool. And everyone came up gift wrapped. Yeah. You know, that's what we used to call it when they yeah. all got tail wrapped. I'm like, oh, here comes a gift. I'm like, what happens if you have the heavy leader, you have a long leader, and you just let them tail wrap themselves? Yeah. You know, when I they're doing that totally burning do run, if you got yeah. the balls to throw the reel in free spool, and, you know, he's burning, obviously, a, a, away from you, 
uh, basically right off the back of the boat, not on an angle or anything. You might get him and then lock it up and put a lot of drag on it. So when he turns, you could get him over the top fin. Yeah. But obviously the leader's got to be heavy enough. Not. I think you could do it. I, if you could get him tail wrapped, you could definitely do it in 10 minutes. I mean, we've... Yeah. We've Even had if he fish just get it under his belly, ninety hundred. Yeah, just get it really under quick. his belly. But it'd be and something that interesting side. to know, like that you could do if you know. There's certain fish that are just pains in the yeah. yeah. Can't, yeah. can't fish, yeah. yeah sure. Devil ones. Like we fought one in the canyon for five hours one night, you know. And I fought like he fought it for an hour. Jimmy fought it for an hour. Then I got pissed off. And I fought it for like <laughs> an hour. I sense a common. It's not that big. I, I don't know what common. you guys are doing. I'm like, uh, I'm terrible. I, I sense I'm a in, common denominator <laughs> of your success. You go like this, this ebb and flow of like stress. And then Mark just goes, <laughs> to the next level volcano uh, stress. And then shit gets done. You catch the fish. You know, I'm a very outgoing volcano person stress. and I will help that's, anyone. That's the name of this but podcast, Volcano, volcano but Stress. Volcano. But volcanic Stress. Everyone should know that I am not a nice person on my boat. <laughs> and and I, well, I don't actually speak anymore. I don't, but everyone knows <laughs> when I raise my hands and don't say anything. So what do you do? You, do? you do you like spirit no, hands? I just, just, throw like, this, okay. I, I just I just throw my hands like kind of yeah like that. Even my boss knows because he makes funny. He throws the hands up and he goes, "Oh, you boy." And he's silent and you just like, "Oh fuck." <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and I'm ready to like derail, completely check off the reservation because I, you know, I don't like that. That's not. I want to catch everyone, every single thing. You know, every don't do this, do that, or when someone does something, it doesn't have to be on my. It, on my boat, but I see it, I'm like, oh, if they would have did that, it would have changed the whole dynamic of it. And that's, we've learned from that. And that's how like putting a team together on a boat is very, very important. You know, I don't have to, actually, honestly, the videos without like music would pretty much be the most boring videos of us yeah. catching like a big, big eye because there's no talking. No one yeah. says a word. Everyone knows what to do. Uh, except and everyone for, knows how fast it can be over. Yeah. yeah. Oh, you know, if yeah. you have that expectation, the verbal comms is at a minimum. Yeah. And and that's it. And everyone's having a good time and you keep morale high, not when stress is high. You know, it's the same thing over like in a tournament. We got a we, we get our bite. I know we're gonna get our bite. I know we're gonna get it. Our tackles two thousand percent because we psychotic. Yeah. You know, we do so many different tests and everything, and Shark and I are just prepare over and over and over and over again and it's it's pretty much boring when people come with us like that's it you know it's not some epic battle it's just a very fluid type of scenario yeah but that's why you're so consistent. for a lot of your yeah. fishing too like once you land them you're not done yet no we're, you know we're, like no. Some, yeah. immediately like the fish is dragged to the door i've seen some of your videos the fish drags to the door and it's just like baits are already going yeah, back, in. back no out, one's yeah. even touched the fish yeah. i'm yeah. screaming in one of the videos, something in it, the water. If you want to listen to a good video, yeah. <laughs> the video where we catch the, a winner in a Montauk challenge, Jimmy, who is uh, worked me first before Shark, he's on the rod. Okay, and if you listen to the verbal, I'm screaming at Jimmy to get a tail rope on it. There's five guys on the boat. I'm screaming at the guy who's fighting just, the fish, who just, who just fought the fish, fish yeah. fought the fish <laughs> under tremendous amount of stress because he knows it's worth a lot of money. Yeah, yeah. and I'm like. Get a fucking tail rope on it. You know, I'm screaming at him, you know? And meanwhile, he's completely gassed, you know, because he's, he's got anxiety. He can't even pick the yeah, tail no, rope he's up. Like, and, you know, I got my my partner, Richie, in the gill a full-time commercial fisherman. And, like, you know, you let him deal with that. And I'm like, I'm not going to yell at him. I'm yelling at Jimmy. Shark and Teddy have the gaff in it. So I'm like, who am I going to yell at? I'm going to yell at Jimmy, you know? So it's, uh, yeah, it's pretty. What was uh, the biggest big eye this year? catch a big uh we didn't catch any big ones this year were, were like, there many big two, ones caught there was a few uh yeah like november november obviously shark caught a very got the real one and like part of one three three twenty three oh, that yeah that's a big fish. that's a hammer yeah that was cool three twenty three that was a good one was that wow. trolling dead bait or dead bait yeah wow you get any day timing no, we didn't do much daytime and we had the big eye fishing was uh definitely different this year because our our biggest underlying problem is we only have one eddy. 
That's a big Heard problem. Heard that from like three guys now. It's yeah. a big problem. Like I grew up, when I was around the canyon, we had 10, 12 eddies a year sometimes, or, or at least minimum five. But this year, that eddy just sat there in Veach and just gets pulverized. And so the fish don't refill back in and there's not new water and not stuff charged up. So you got to be on that front line when the big eyes come. Yep. And if not, you're, you're not going to catch them. We had one shot of like, I think we went five for seven with uh, with Mike's son, Ellis, which was very good in the dark. Um, but no, there wasn't too many opportunities where there was a lot of fish caught, considering the amount of effort. Mm. That's what I look at. I look at effort per yield. Yeah. You know, you have, look at the Tri-State. You have 100 good boats. You have 100 boats this year, or 98 boats. 30 boats are as very, very top crews very good they get the bite they're going to catch it and if you exploit that at number of days and hours fishing versus what's actually caught it's nothing in the scheme of it i'm glad you brought that up because a lot of people ask us that like daily decision wise doing that math and figuring out spots to go to oh yeah based on intel i think a lot of people just get pigeonholed on you know whatever the best spot what, is exactly yeah, there is no spot no i can tell you I, you know and to me uh, you know, I, I, I should know better every year. I mean, it's like a, a fourth quarter decision, especially during a tournament. Like, do you go where the water is? And you know there's going to be one there. And you got to battle 40 boats. Or do you go sit by yourself where the water was and they could just be living there on the bottom? And that's what happened pretty much this year. It was, we went to Veach where we've been fishing for the prior three weeks and it's been good. And... I should have known to go to West Atlantis. And one boat went to West Atlantis that I know of. He was all by himself and he caught a 240. Mm. You know, he was seems one like that one. canyon always produces a big, big guy in every tournament. Yep. Yeah. West Atlantis is one of those spots that if you were to say, you know, you have one spot to go, I, I would say I would go there. Yeah. Um, the dip and the Hudson used to be our, our jam. It just hasn't been there. There's was a few this year caught in the dip and a few caught in the tails during our local tournament. But it's it's weird how certain spots and obviously that's all water driven because they come with the water and then they lay on the bottom the whole time that from the most of the data that we can gather about big eyes and how they act in certain parts of the moon and how they act and they move around and but another issue that we have we have no illex offshore it's a big big problem there's no squid offshore Just so weird because yep. it wasn't like Three years ago, they were we had, absurd. We, we had too much, too much squid. Too much. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. And I know a lot of the draggers personally. I know a lot of those trip boats. Um, very good friends of a lot of them. And, you know, they were doing massive hauls. They were doing 100,000 pounds in two hours of fishing where they haul back and the boat, 100-foot boats are stopping because the bag is so big. It's crazy. Yeah. And then, and it's not because they're overfishing. It's just a cyclic matter of how squid spawn and the size of the squid and you know it, it comes and goes but you take those guys out of the equation and then you have all the guys off nantucket catching on lalagos and then the squid closes because they all caught too many because everyone's fishing on one thing yeah. yeah kind of the same principle as our open and closed days now you have so much effort mm -hmm. december one you know you see videos of like 80 boats out by you guys like that's Dude, it was like 140. It was 140 in the, sec gosh. the second day. On just, I don't know, have you you fished that wagon before? Yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Like the southwest corner, basically. Yeah. There was 104 boats. on the shoal, 104. So that's where we caught the one with Dan. Yeah. yeah. You know? So, Which is, yeah. it was like a, a, a three-mile yeah, space. Three by yeah. three. Three by three, basically. Yeah. Oh, my yeah. gosh. Yep. That's not fun. Insane. You know, and then there's just people, there's just anchors everywhere. Yeah, and they're landing just, the fish. Thank God everybody was drifting this time because people would be losing a lot of fish. But yeah. so even still, like, you're having four boats move in one battle. It was over. In December. That biomass was <laughs> there, and it handled that pressure for three three days plus, like, a, little a bit. night. That's yeah. it. Yeah, well, the fish get so beat up, seeing all the rods... And then if, let's just say there's 100 fish caught, there's probably 300 hooked, oh, maybe no. more. Yeah. You don't know because of the caliber of fishermen. You know, mm -hmm. a lot of people, that, you know, either getting into it and don't know how to fight them or, you know, it's it's good and bad. You know, mm -hmm. there's there's people, there's a lot of fishermen now. You know, you go out and a lot of the, the inshore bites, 
even our inshore fishing, our, you know, I'm sure you guys see our inshore yellowfin and bluefin fishing south of Block Island is the best it's ever been. Mm-hmm. You know, it's actually supporting charter boats now. So awesome. Yeah. Which is good. Yeah. You know, when it gets people into fishing, in the fishing, because yeah. it's a lot closer. It's not canyon fishing, which is a whole different thing. But our canyon fishing has been slow because of that, because all the elephants, there's no squid. So where do they go? They go storm inside and go looking for sand eels and hmm. and the mush, whatever else they it's can It's kind of eat. the tough thing about up here is like a new offshore fisherman. There's no, there's no like ladder to climb There's anymore. No middle ground. It's not like, oh, I'm going to go chase yeah. pounds. Yeah. Straight bass or, yeah, 100 inches. Yeah, right? yeah you know? the same thing by us. Yeah. yeah. It really is. The same. There's the, We have the middle level by us. Obviously, we have our very good inshore bottom fishing. Yeah. Sea bass and fluking. And then now we have, you know, you're, you're take your baby steps, then you're like in elementary and you go catch the 40 to 60 pounders yep. um, outside the Coimbra and you could do that. And that's very good because... You don't have to go far. You don't need a big boat. The weather's very consistent. Mm. You can catch a good amount of fish in a short period of time. And then you got your canyon fishing, which is mm-hmm. way more advanced um, than anything else. Mm-hmm. But. Good mix. I want to go back to one thing you said that was interesting. You said uh, you went five or seven at night with big eyes. Yep. What do you do differently fighting a big wolf pack like that during the day versus at night? Do you do anything differently? Do you change your lights? Do you, like, what do you do? Well, communication is major. Yeah. I feel like at night you got to communicate where your line is, like how far out it is. Like, it's not easy because you yeah. can't see, you can't see where your line is. So right. it's, mm. tangles happen. It's Are you, are you locking some up and keeping some light or are you kind of just fighting them all at the same time? Kind of. I mean, we have our methods. I just like bring. So I like for someone it, listening. It, it, this it is like a good talk. On, you know, and when we say at night, it could be at three in the morning. Right. Yeah. That's dark. what I mean. It's in the dark. dark. Yeah. Low light in the dark. It's all in the dark. It's all in the dark. They're yeah. a night feeder. Um, so obviously, we troll a different spread. You don't troll eleven rods in the dark. It just doesn't work. Yeah. We we found five to six rods, or maybe seven, is the most effective, um, especially hooking. Because when you usually hook one, they either come in the dark two different ways. The hog comes out. It's the lone wolf at 3.30, and they're all big, and it's a single bite, and you can focus on that one, or every rod goes, and in little, you you have to be ready for anything. Hmm. So hopefully your long riggers go, and lately, because every reel has 9,000 yards of spectra, yeah. just <laughs> back your reel off, Let it, as long as they're hooked. So what I would do is, the long riggers go and all the other rods are going. Usually what I do is I go up, I throw the drag up past strike a little bit, make sure the rod's loaded up, hooked, and then we just back it right off. Okay. Um, and then just let them smoke away. Because once that hook is buried, back it off, let them swim, you know, and let them just peel off maybe with like five, six, seven pounds of drag. And they run off a, you know, a shitload so of line. Light drag. Yeah. yeah. Shitload little line and let them go. Then work your way in. So if the fish, if you hook one on a swimming plug, you hook one on a big lure or a big ballyhoo on a short rigger, those are the ones you want to get first. Put some heat on. Yeah. Like clearing your lines. You, you know put I mean? more or less drag on fighting fish with swimming plugs are the same. It de- that depends. You know, it, it really, that type of situation, it, it depends. You pull a lot of hooks with swimming plugs. Yeah, that's what I was wondering. Yeah, so, you, you just don't touch the drag yeah, that much. Don't touch the drags. You yeah. know, that's usually 15 pounds, and then we go up to like 22, 24. Uh, we do fish way more drag uh, than because all the guys we have are obviously very well experienced. So I tell most people 18 to 20 is pretty much the average that anyone stand up with. We generally use 25 to 30. Because we could pull on and we know when to pull, when not to pull. Mm-hmm. You know, there's a give and take type relationship. All your anglers, hand pressure, I'm sure they're all just very yep. dialed. Yep. So when uh, I see, you know, the fish is starting to come and you can listen to any of the videos we take, you're like, all right, I see shark, let's go. And like shark will put it up one more notch on the reel, like just above strike, which is 31, 32, put the reel in low gear and... Because I drive from the back of the boat and gaff all on the same side, mm-hmm. just so we don't have to tear apart our transom. Yeah. Um, 
So when the yeah, <laughs> we won't get on. We you. no, but no, it, that's professionalism. Everything mm. should be taken off the side of the boat. There's absolutely nothing. Nothing good is landing off the back of the boat. No. Mm. You're in your prop wash, you know. Regardless or not, someone's gonna hit the side of the boat. You catch on tunes with gaffs. It is what it is. Have one side that's a bad side, um, but if it's in the prop wash, you're gonna pull the hook. If you have to put the boat in gear and things laying in your in your uh, wash. You have 2,700 horsepower. You put the thing in gear. All that water is right on the fish's face. So you could pull the hook. It could ac- exponentially put way more drag on the fish's yeah. mouth. That's, That's a good point. Think of. Yeah. Yeah. Good so you get him out of the clean water. i be like, okay, shark, go. And when he goes, like when the swivel comes out, and say we have a 25-foot leader, and we're fighting multiples, he'll just start going like 32, 30. I'm like, shovel, let's go, and get the fish in a circle quick. And usually I got to take a shot. You know very very quickly to like get that one in mm-hmm. and i'll just hold them there depending on it I'll open the door bring it in but he knows to grab the next rod right in line harness in and you use it as a assembly line yeah you know try to keep all right take one out to the right okay next guy ready okay good if it's not a that good of angle or obviously you got to take a little bit more time but you just keep managing it appropriately but obviously your tangles and you got to watch which way the lines are going and it's very hard obviously in the land seven yeah and usually you know five or seven that's very good, good in the dark you know in, in the, the dark. dark and i i'm telling everyone do you feel anybody and that's what i'm always saying is do you yeah. feel something different doesn't have to be you know you yeah, know just a little vibration a little you'll, vibration you'll, you'll, from you'll the other way the game what's in your mouth yeah uh, but quick, yeah, mark, yeah. in your mouth. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so it's it's pretty, uh, and obviously my tension is very high at this point. So I'm like, well, do you feel something? No, I don't feel something. Meanwhile, I see the you know four thousand foot it goes vividity like, coming yeah, together with you know, mono like, spectral a, a wand, spreader bar, a yeah. wind on splice. Oh yeah. Well, we don't. You don't fish spreader bars at night? Honestly, we, we've gotten away from fishing spreader bars completely. Wow, coming from you. I feel you. like you've been yeah, one of the biggest... Uh, I mean, I, I'm sure you still fish them at times. So you, no, we, I, yeah, I, we yeah, do yeah I'll tell times. you this. We're side tangenting, but yes. perfect. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> no, but if you want to catch elephants, you want to catch numbers of fish. That's what I grew up doing. You want to catch a lot of fish, you fish bomb, put 12 of them out. Yeah. Put eight, eight bars out. You want to catch a lot of elephants, be my guy. You know, I'm not into that. Uh, the owner's not into that at all hmm. you know only like one time a year he likes doing it <laughs> literally one time <laughs> yeah. it's like if we're inshore and you could bomb the bars out when you know at any given moment like a 500 pound blue marlin comes up you don't want it going near a spread of bars it's a yeah. giant disaster yeah you know and he's gonna get stung and then you don't even get a chance to pitch him a bait him need a plug but you know big eyes fishing is a, just a mess you know yeah. especially the way they eat they're they're terrible eaters. They miss this thing nine times out of ten. It's a fat kid at Christmas time with the M and M's at your aunt's house, <laughs> yeah. trying to scoop <laughs> all of them. Ah, you know, like and, and, you know, your cheeks are stuffed with them. Yeah. And, he, and of course, he's not going to get the hook bait. He's going to get. He's going to come up in the middle because it's coming from three hundred feet away. Yeah, he's going and, for the biggest target. Yeah, biggest target. And oh, if I get the ones in the middle, I'm going to get some. But it doesn't mean. They're going to get the hook bait every time. And that's what happens a lot. Hmm. You, the thing burns off. You're actually fighting it for two minutes. He's got clamped down on the squids. Huh. And all of a sudden, the hook pulls. Yeah. And you're like, what the hell was that? You know? Yeah. And, Makes sense. I, I mean, the giant bluefins do that. Yeah. yeah. They're, they're 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 like, they just come up and they just try to eat, eat a like, wing They try or to just kill the whole spread yeah. of bar at once. And yeah. they're almost like they're going to turn around and come how back. how good our creeping yeah. is. You're like, how did he rip the wing off? Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. that thing is perfectly bench crimped, perfectly nitro pressed on there. Yeah. Like, yeah. How is that even possible? The thing is demolished. Yeah. yeah. You know? yeah. So we've gotten away. So no spread of bars at night. Definitely no, no bars yeah, at definitely night. Definitely. Single okay. baits, generally values, a couple swimming plugs, um, you know, a lure or two, but straight running stuff. And hopefully there's no weed. I was yeah. just going to ask that. Do you have any single lure weed tactics? No, there's nothing. <laughs> the tactic <laughs> is reel it in. No, <laughs> you guys come in my area in the helm. I will rip your hands off. Go back there. Watch <laughs> the tension. And at night, you there's no it. lights on. So you she watch the rod. Yeah, you the watch load. The, the load. And that's what I teach everyone. You know, you've got to learn from 
even just the rod pulsing to if it all of a sudden just gets heavy yeah it doesn't it doesn't, doesn't move pulse, it just yep you got it so are you fishing everything off the tips at night or are you fishing no we fish it. I mean, you can yeah. still okay. see it in the riggers though yeah. Yeah. i guess yeah. that's true yeah, it kind of yep. like, bends out or you yeah. watch the mono on your halyard even though it's locked oh, up it stretches a it just bit. stretches a little tiny bit that's all you're gonna or if you go to turn the handle you know right away yeah. that there's grass on there mm. um and there's nothing you could do about it you know you got to check it and and i think sometimes it helps trigger a bite Oh, because yeah. you're Moving you're reeling around. it in, you're setting out. Sometimes you only have three rods out, and you go off, and you're like, oh, you yeah. know. And of course, I, I huff and puff when that happens. <laughs> you know, like you guys ought to reel it in right now, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. because sometimes you want them to eat certain rods. You don't want them. I, I would prefer they don't eat the long riggers. I want them that I ran them over and they and eat the, the plug, flats yeah. or the plug or yeah. you know, because then you're going to catch multiples. But when you catch one on the right long, you're like, oh. You missed them on the turn or whatever yeah. tack you were taking. And it's obviously then you have to navigate with people who have never navigated in, the o- in open ocean before, <laughs> which is comical. Uh, you know, you know some, yeah, some boats have two colors of the same nav lights. They don't even, you know. <laughs> you run the boat at all? Not really. No. 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 I don't let it at, at night because I'm, I mean, you guys have. You want the responsibility. You guys yourself. should take a trip with us. And see, oh, how, I would love to. And how this actually. <laughs> this sounds like a podcast. <laughs> yeah. H- how this actually progresses. Because I'm podcast. one of the few people, like, I don't lay down at all. Like, I, we're there and I'll tell Shark to go lay down, even though he doesn't want to go lay down. And I'll, and it's, it's happened a lot where I'm like, go lay down. He may as maybe lays down for four minutes, three minutes. I'm like, we're on, come back up. You know? <laughs> what are you doing? Get back up here. Yeah, like, get up here. I need you like, right now. You just we're told on. me to, like, we just. Yeah. Like, and obviously everyone needs sleep, but then I want him on the rod, you know, yeah. or I want my boss on a rod. Huh? It is one or the other, like sword fishing, especially it's without fail. You know, sometimes you can't even get your boots on. I'm like, get out of here. I don't even really care. Yeah. You know, <laughs> just start reeling on it. Cause then it's the same routine. He's fighting it. Mike's fighting it. Everyone's harnessed in. Everyone has the appropriate harness. Uh, which is important. Very important. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Everyone on my boat has their own. We have our own little uh, like Marvel figures, whatever we got. <laughs> Shark's got his insignia. <laughs> you know? No shit. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. What's Jim, what does Jimmy have? Well, I don't even know. What so is Mango? We call him Jimmy Mango. <laughs> uh, I can't say what's on Jimmy's. Richie's got a couple of extra zip ties, so you and he cut them <laughs> so that every time I touch it, when I pull it out, I cut my <laughs> hands. Yeah, ah, I go. Why would you put this on here? You know, keep you away from my shit. Yeah, yeah. Like he's got three of them, so it's like ah, you know. I'm like, all right, uh, that's fine. But having everything ready, you know, you can't sit on our mezzanine. Our, you know, we have a nice mezzanine in the boat. There's five giant harnesses sitting. There. <laughs> no harnesses are sitting there. No one's sitting. Yeah, um, it makes a difference though when you hook. Hook five, seven fish. Yeah. You know, having everybody fit for a harness matters. Yeah, they should step into it and clip in. That's it. Harnesses, especially you're going to go big fish fishing, obviously, is a big... Uh, you don't want to be fighting yourself when you're fighting the fish. That's a you huge know, it's, pet peeve of mine. It's crazy. It, it's tough to get past on our trips, you know, because people aren't always decided on who wants to fight the fish, you know. Most people run away from the rod. Yeah. yeah. Well, the, they don't want to be the, the first... I, I, the speech I always gave on the canyon runner, don't give the guy with your white polo and the Sperry's from work, who's the extra on the list, the rod first. Yeah. He's not your go-to guy. Your mm-hmm. go-to guy is whoever has the most experience just to land them so you build confidence. Yeah. You, you know, you lose, you hook that first fish, you know, if you lose it, that's it. Days yeah. Over. <laughs> 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 yeah, yeah. You know what yeah, I mean? Exactly. Like, and then he gets stared at when no one gets a bite in the next three yeah. seconds yeah. after, you know, and then you got to wait a while to get a fish. So... You, you probably want to land, and I'm sure you guys. For us, for us, it's the best. For me, it's the best listener. Whoever's been paying the attention, the, you, right. it's usually the quietest person on the boat. Yeah, yeah. or girl. I was just gonna. I was, I was, days, I was I gonna say, I'll put my better. money on any girl because they know they're not overpowering it. They yeah. know they're not yeah. pulling on it, but they'll listen because they have no clue. They're yeah. not in any element. They're not in a nail salon. They're not in you know anything they could possibly have a real say. And they're like, okay. And then they go very smooth. Yeah. It, it's like a very. And they can't over, they can't reel against the drag. Like you get the big muscly dude. Oh, they they, go they wear burn, himself oh, out they like burn three and a half out. minutes yeah. fighting a giant because yeah. they just yeah. reel against Lactic 40 pounds. Yeah. Oh, yeah. And they're done. And the <laughs> girl can't get above that. Yeah. They only reel when they can reel. Yeah. And that goes to the theory I was saying. Like 
you pull, they pull. Yeah. Usually <laughs> those fish don't like go crazy. They're just like kind of just move around. They lay there. Obviously, it's, it gets interesting always in the, at the back of the boat because it's that last 25 to 30 feet where the fish is just dogging. And sometimes they can't pull hard enough to, you know, yeah. break them. I'm sure you guys, you know, every once in a while walk over, kind of hold the line. Yeah, we you hold know, the spool. Hold, you know, just to like slow. Palm it a little yeah, bit. Yeah, use the rod a little bit yeah. differently yeah. just to change that little bit. One thing you do too is like when they're starting a pinwheel, we, we kind of push them in the inside of the pinwheel. In right. the corner of the boat, and it yeah. just short. It just literally shortens the pinwheel, compresses it to the point where they're like done. Right. Yeah. You do know? the vertical. Yeah. yeah. They pop. I mean, we can't push too much because you'll break the rod, but just enough you just start to really yeah. put some, side pressure on them. Very similar that we found is like, I don't really touch the drag, and he's like, "You want you want me to go up?" And I go, "No, don't go up." But pushing the lever, one little, little notch, notch at the end, at the end, yeah. breaks the fish. Like, if it's set at 30 pounds and you go to 32 all of a sudden, especially when they're dogging like that, it just crushes them. I don't know yeah. what, you know, that little bit where the, the rod pulse changes, where they, they do a pinwheel and they're... That they're, hard pulse? Yeah, yeah, yeah. like, and then just all of a sudden, if they're pulling out four feet and the boat's going up and down, then they only pull a foot and a half. Yeah. It changes that whole, and then you could get two or three turns, and then they kind of flop over, and then they change directions it shocks them yeah a lot you try to time it obviously going away going away when they're coming up yep. yeah same. so yep. like when i said all right go 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 and i'll say hold the spool and you actually they come cleaning up to the top yeah. big eyes and stuff like that they're not big enough that you want to put like a giant you put it in reverse and you could if you're fast you, you can get them. yeah you yeah. can get them but like they're so fast you know, because that's a lot smaller fish. Yeah. They could turn and turn at you really, really quick. So we don't generally. I wait till he comes around. You don't roar back on him. No, yeah. I, I I do in the beginning, but once it gets to like the swivels coming in and out of the tip, then you're you just let them kind of just plane out. And then once the leader's on the rod, if the, once the leader's on and he's gonna come up and he's going slow, hold it, and I'll give it like one bump in reverse, and we'll yeah. be able to. You know, we we gaff everything. I teach all the guys gaff underneath. We Interesting. Don't, we don't go over the top. No one goes over the top, especially trolling. Hmm. You know, that's a, it's a big no-no. You know, if you're going ahead, unless the boat is going ahead and you're ready to go, you're gonna go for a ride. Yeah. And I've I've gotten ripped over. Oh, because they can keep their momentum. They can, they can yeah. stay up, right? Yeah. I've had you know Phil Delaney, who I got to work for on the Canyon Runner. Like, he taught me a lot about watching that and i got literally a oh, 21 year old kid i got launched off the back of the boat <laughs> launched because i've uh, had a few big yeah you know, i tried caps. to i tried to one hand a 90 pound elephant at night he was coming in a circle i'm like oh, come here and i just go <laughs> over the top and i remember i, I held it and next thing you know, i was off the back gone the back of the boat i was like oh my god i'm in the water <laughs> you know and phil just there's like he just was like yelling not at me but he's yeah, yelling at the charter, keep reeling, keep reeling. You know, don't worry about Mark. You know, I'm like, I remember when we were anchored up, and I was like, oh my God, this is embarrassing. And the fish is swimming around, it's got the gaff in its head. And I from that moment, and I'll never do it again. But when you gaff on the underside, like under the throat, flips them. It flips them. And when it flips them, their their reaction is to kick. Because that's a, any fish's reaction. So he actually kicks toward you mm -hmm. if you can direct them. So it's very easy. You go under and it like kind of pulls it right. Pins them right there. Right to the side of the boat. And then you have that short opportunity. Okay, get another gaff hmm. over the top, in the head, done. Yeah. You know, And then that way, the guy who comes in the second gaff can lay it over the other gaff and crisscross it. And the hook's going to slide somewhere in the throat, head, not... Anywhere in the meat. Yep. Right in the right, right, right. Line, baby. <laughs> right. Right. right in the dorsal. <laughs> yeah, the yeah, just, yeah. Over the oh like, I got him. You know. you Some go. of these deep, these YouTube special gaff shots. Oh. I, I'm the, not gonna lie, I the, go over the top pretty much on every small tuna, but no, well, these guys well, that are reaching. Well, meaning, oh. you know, small tuna, anything under 60 pounds, no problem. Yeah. yeah. yeah any of your body I guess weight. We're, we're harpooning, yeah. you know. But uh, I'm saying anything, anything over size, 73. You know, yeah. real size. You right. know what I mean? You don't want to... Yeah, I guess even, we're not gaffing 200 pounders much. <laughs> no. If you had to gaff like, oh, I think it's short. You know what I mean? Like, okay, big racer coming in. You know? <laughs> yeah. Like, yeah. 
<laughs> but you, you got to be careful. You know, you, you know, you're going to obviously break some stuff. You're going to get ripped. You know, obviously yeah. ripped over. You're going to break a gaff eventually because you're going to, you think you're overpowering him and it's going to get ahead of steam and, you know. Fucking strong. They are strong fish, dude. A bluefin's real strong. Yeah. We had at least two gaffs going in the water. We got them all back. I didn't lose any gaffs this year. Actually, we did we lose a gaff? Year. We lost two gaffs and a harpoon last year. We only we, lost a gaff. I had I had a gaff going in the, the water shark. with a fish in <laughs> December after harpooning it and then gaffing it in the head. Gaff, or gaff in the head or any yeah. flips and like yeah. poof, somehow just wet. I thought he was like 75 inches and it'll be in 93. <laughs> so. Small head one? Yeah, I, it was a weird one. <laughs> small, yes. small well, we were, we were catching, we were catching, we were catching <laughs> like we were catching like all fish over 100 inches, and then it was like December, and they were like 80 to 90. You know, so this thing came up. I almost didn't even stick it. I'm like, like, oh, this it's is short. short. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. That's what I said too with the one in Block Island. I'm like, are you kidding me? It's a short. You know, and I'm like looking at it, and my was like, it's huge. What are you talking about? It's all well over a keeper. You know? Oh yeah. yeah, yeah. It was a nice one. This episode of the Seabros Fishing Podcast is brought to you by Monahan's Marine. We recently partnered with Monahan's and are excited to be working with a local marine business that has been serving the South Shore of Massachusetts since 1961. For decades, the crew at Monahan's has been helping generations of boat owners with outboard parts, boat service, marine equipment, and fishing tackle. Their professionalism and passion for being on the water has made them one of the most reputable boating headquarters in the Northeast. Monahan's is located on Washington Street in Weymouth, and they are currently a Jones Brothers and Tidewater Boats retailer and have the most well-stocked inventory of Yamaha outboards, parts, and rigging in mass. The entire staff and crew of technicians have decades of experience, and as a recent addition, Monahan's has built and rigged out a brand new 4,000 square foot offshore and inshore fishing tackle shop. They are fully stocked with everything needed for offshore canyon fishing, nearshore bluefin tuna fishing, striped bass fishing, and more. We're excited to be able to use this new space as a home base to maintain our own tackle and charter fishing fleet, as well as use it as a spot to film some upcoming podcasts and workshops. As a part of this partnership, Monahan's has been generous enough to give all listeners a discount on anything in their store and facility. So when shopping at Monahan's, if you use promo code MBG24 at checkout, you'll receive 10% off any purchase in their tackle or marine department. To learn more about Monahan's Marine, their location, boat and engine inventory, or parts, visit monahansmarine.com. Yeah, we had a few of those this year. We had like a three-week period where everything was 105 inches. And then we got into like some like sixty inch fish, like the thing's like forty inches. <laughs> yeah. I think it's yeah. tiny. Yeah, you Which bring them in. Which is good though because it keeps your gets some, some meat for your oh, clients. It's perfect. You oh, know, yeah. on the, if you guys could do that every day, where there was a I spot to catch, rather do that. Small yeah. ones were like, okay, we'll go catch a big one. Yeah. And then on the way home, you know, we're on a closed day where you can go catch and release one. They see the whole scene, or you know, it's one thirty and you sat there all day in your market. You know, some days that just yeah, don't do bite. Yeah. Go do something different. You can go grab something to keep them entertained yeah. i wish so, the small fish lived closer to the land but it seems like everything just gets bigger by us i know towards land you well, know like we're, we're on rhode the, island rhode yeah. island now everything is size extra, pro- extra pronto yeah. size you know? <laughs> yeah. we got a fish of a blue fish of 15 pounds for bait. You know? yeah yeah i was gonna well, say our ratio of shorts this past year was 10 giants to every two shorts yeah we had Peak at Hill, which had like a pretty consistent troll bite all year. You get one fish every morning trolling. Yeah. And then you might as well just go bass fishing because that was the only bite you're going to get. Oh, mm-hmm. really? Yeah. yeah. They come in from the deep water. They'd hit the edge with for the whales for 45 morning. minutes to maybe two hours. Yep. What size were they? 48 oh. to 60 yeah. inch fish. Okay, so they're overs. So. Yeah. yeah. You get one and then it was like, all right. Bass fish the rest yeah. of the day. We had a couple of days we had multiples, but almost every day was like you put your spread out, you were yeah. on false light, done. That was it. Yeah. Oh, I yeah. do love fishing down there. I fished down there with Brett quite a few times. Yeah. I do miss that about you there's so many spots and like going back to like this is the spot. There's so many spots. Oh there's, my God. There, I mean, you look at what we're catching now. You're there's fish from my inlet in Shinnecock Inlet, Montauk, right outside the butterfish hole. They're there all summer. Block Island, Rhode Island, 
God knows there's 90 miles of open bottom or no man's. There's mm. billions of fish there that just no one run into. And then you get to the south side and there's fish all over there. You know, yeah. it's just where you have boats, obviously you're going to have fish, but. There's so many more fish though. Oh, yeah. In other places and no one's fishing. Yeah. yeah. You know. And you guys have obviously seen that from when you guys first started, you know, to you guys lived on trolling. Yeah. yeah. That's it. You yep. building spreader bars, catching shorts, and yep. you know if you caught a keeper, it was a big deal. I'm like, yeah. well, that's what Brett said. Like that 2010, there was no fish. No. You know, there was no fish. You anywhere. get a 74 incher in 2010. You're like, this is unbelievable. Yeah, we yeah. got one. You yeah. know what I mean? This yeah. is it. You know, yep. this is. But now it's yeah, what 110? All right, whatever. You know what I mean? You're like, oh. tell us about the dragger bite. Dragger fishing. Dragger fishing. You want tell it? us what you're willing to tell us. Anyway. <laughs> <laughs> the good thing about dragger fishing is some of my best friends are on draggers. Yeah. So, A, Shark and I, when my buddy Danny comes in, he's, he just, you know, nonstop, how much bait you want, you know, and it's like pretty fun. We just pull up, he'll pull the whole pucker right in the boat if I tell him to, yeah. you know, because he knows he's the first guy when we get to the dock, gets a loin of tuna. Yeah. That's like, you would think a dragger could go eat anything they want. All he wants is a piece of tuna. So, dragger fishing happens in, uh, September, October, when the lala goes, which is a white squid that steps off the beach. And usually it happens when the water starts moving to the west and the fish find the draggers that have all the bait. And uh, when they haul back, it's just like a feeding frenzy. Shovel bait over the side. Is it? Is there anything mixed with the bluefin or is it all bluefin there? It's bluefin, yellowfin. Yeah, a lot of yellowfin. Yeah, a lot of yeah. yellowfins, good size, but they're yeah. mixed in. Yeah. All of a sudden, like, you just look down because you pull up to the dragger when they're towing you start shoveling bait, and there could be 30-pound yellow fins. It could be 200-pound blue fins. could be, what I was, what are those, brown sharks everywhere. Like, if you fell in the could water, be, yeah. you'd, be, you'd be destroyed. Yeah. <laughs> About, yeah. You know, like six seconds, you'd oh. be gone. Yeah. <laughs> Just a skeleton. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> no, the amount of sharks I'd is be gone. Uh, Everything's is mixed in there. Yeah. There's Fits all kinds giants. of giants. There's blue marlins there in the fall because the water's warm. So it's the eddy water that comes in from offshore, and when it starts moving back out, it's just like a Venn diagram. It's three circles, you know. <laughs> I don't know. Venn diagram is just math falling. Yeah, yeah. but <laughs> it, it is right. It Venn is Venn diagram. It, it's, Mark's it got a whiteboard. It's comparing and contrasting. <laughs> yeah. Everyone thinks this dragger fishing is new. This has been going on since the dawn of time. Yeah. You know, giant fishing boat hauls back 100,000 pounds of fish. What else do you think is behind the boat? Yeah. You know? Yeah. yeah. And uh, it's just different now. It's just the... We have way more yellowfins in shore because of it. So now they keep the yellowfins corralled. It keeps them all there. So as long as we have good weather, this year the weather was terrible in the fall. And when the, we have terrible weather, the, the fish just keep moving out because the draggers can't stay on them long enough. Mm. But knowing when to go to the draggers, everyone's just like going to be going to the draggers, even like the giant yeah. fish. And every, there'll be people on every dragger in June. Yeah. You know, poor guy. You know, there'll be an accident. Definitely someone. Oh, yeah. Uh, yeah definitely sure. someone cracked with, in the fog. Oh, shit. You know, and then they don't know how to approach them. And, you know, 90% of people don't even have Channel 16 on. Yeah. You know, the dragger's like, stay away. You know? <laughs> are you doing? Yeah, and, 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 and then, yeah, the net's hauling back and you see the float line and he's be in front of the net. Like, the net's coming yeah. to the boat, and he's in front. And he's like, I'm hooked up here, you know? <laughs> I watch these people, I'm like, what are you doing? You're yeah. putting everyone at, a, at like, harms, because they just have no clue. No. What What's going on? That The net's 600 feet away from the boat. There's giant doors. There's cables, yeah. you know? But very, very good fishing. You basically back up to the back of the boat after they haul back, and... This might as well be supermarket sweet. Is the whole landing the first one hooked behind the draggers just as vital as when? The most important. Yes, yeah. for sure. The most important. 100%. Yeah. You know, you dump just, a lot of bait. Just like Hawaii they're talking about. Yeah. And just you like. You lose them, that's it. That's Go it. Go to the next boat. Yeah. yeah. They, you break one off. Can you get them going? Yes. But the key is like when we dump the bait, you have four rods with bait on them and you're firing out all at the same time. And have four other rods with leaders on them. Ready to go. Ready to go. So are like, you going with a variety of leaders at first? Or are you going gorilla gear right off I, the rip? Like 80 pound right off the bat. Yeah. Because yeah, if you can get them going, you know, just like a longliner. Like longliners can't be wrong. They use 300. Don't don't say the fish are leader shot. Yeah. Stop. Right. I mean, Brett's a perfect example. Brett fishes gorilla gear. Yeah. His lead and his leader's this long. This, <laughs> trust me, I, 
<laughs> yep. This long, he he sent he, me a video. He's of, not parting. I hope you listen. <laughs> I know you cut back more because yeah. I know how much you're buying. You know what I mean? <laughs> okay, the math. I can do good math. You know, I'm very good at math. So I know you're down to six feet and no sometimes. He sent me a picture of reeling in like a 110 six. and the swivel is like at its peck fin. Yeah. Like, <laughs> yeah. yeah, okay. And he catches them. Oh, yeah. And that, and that goes to show you what works for him, works for him. What works for you, works for you. That's what everyone has a hook that they use, right? This yeah. is the hook, you know, but no, that's what you're confident in using. And that's what works. Right. You know, it's, we have... Like our the way we have our rod set up, belt set up, it's what you use day in and day out. That's what works for you. Works for you. Mm -hmm. Doesn't work for me, you know. And you like, oh, you got to use this hook. Might as well just say we're gonna pull every one. Yeah. You know, I might as well throw every one of those in the garbage. Yes. Yeah. I'm not using it. Or you have bad luck using it for the first time. Right. Mm -hmm. You know. So it's pretty uh, pretty important. But we had um, you know some good chunk fishing down by us, like. Not in the draggers. We got to take out a, a tennis player for my boss's son-in-law. I watched that uh, for, on Netflix. Was it that Netflix Ma Ma thing? Match points. Yeah, yeah. yeah. How have right? I not seen this? It, it's like a tennis like reality documentary. Bars and they're they're rating. Rating. Well, no, they're at a match. <laughs> correct me if I'm wrong, but they're at a match he's at near you. US he's Open. at the U.S. US Open. Open. Okay. Yeah. okay. No. <laughs> he's at the match. He's at a match. Not a big deal. Yeah. Might as well be the Super Bowl. Yeah. 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 Okay? Yeah. Yeah. So, so Chris, who's uh, Mike's son-in-law, tells us, oh, Tommy wants to come fishing. And this is the window he has. He has a Sunday, you know, from 5 a.m. to noon. <laughs> Can we catch him something? What, what's the biggest thing that we can catch him? And I'm like, dear God. And he goes, well, he has to play in the U.S. Open because he's number, I think at that point he was like 11 or 12 in the world. Wow. Yeah. So it is impressive. It's you know? insane. Yeah, it's insane. And he's an unbelievable athlete. So I'm like, yeah, yeah, yeah no problem. I'll take anyone fishing. All good. And then it like the reality of. We have seven hours, and and then Netflix is coming on the you know coming on the boat, and they're filming, and I'm like, okay, <laughs> you know this is now. Like, How many times did his hand go like, on that trip? Come on, no, 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 he had no, no. pockets after. Yeah, no, I, I, no, he was I, good. I, I was good. I, I so you know the reality of him coming. He's like, all right, he's leaving practice. He's got a night off. Then he'll meet you at the boat. I'm like, all right, so. I tell Shark, I remember I told Shark three o'clock and, and we had to do a bunch of stuff the day before because it's hot out. It's August, what was it? 15th or something yeah, like that. August, yeah. So we don't take ice or anything till the that night because it's just going to melt and yeah. get everything going. I remember Shark walking down the dock and I had the motors running, the ice is loaded, every rod is triple rigged and he just looks at me, he goes, did you even sleep? And I'm like... <laughs> <laughs> no, I woke up around 12 and you know, I've been here the whole time. And I'm like, I got the, sh I got his routine, put his bag on, generator's going, shore power. He goes, yeah, everything's done? I'm like, yeah, everything's done. You know, and I'm like, so now I'm, I'm just getting, getting serious, like yeah, real see, quick. I'm like, yeah, serious. And I'm like, oh, now I'm like sweating because, you know, you don't want, now you got cameras and obviously uh, my boss, it's, it's, it's probably, you know, it's a very important, a lot of pressure. Mm. And I'm like, great. You know what I mean? Like, the, how is this bluefin on a slick, calm day? Sunday. 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 <laughs> great day. Yeah. You know? Uh, <laughs> for those listening, don't book a Sunday. Don't book yeah. a Sunday. Kidding. Or Saturday. <laughs> yeah. Yep, we can go bass fishing on Saturday. Yeah. That's even better. Yeah. So I'm like, oh, where are we going to go? What are we going to do? You know? And I'm like, I, I wanted to go to the canyon because I know we could put like, a couple of yellow fins on real quick, uh, maybe a white marlin just inside, but it's just wasting a lot of time uh, running. So I'm like, oh, I don't want to run. So I'm like, we're going to go chunking inshore, like something that we don't ever do. I'm like, dear God, like, I, I hope this works. You know what I mean? Like, I <laughs> Me really, too. I was just... yeah, yeah, yeah. Shark doesn't question what, what I know. He's like, we're going to go where? And I'm like, <laughs> on a Sunday? And I remember I come out the inlet, I'm going down the beach. And he goes, where are we going? And I'm like, I don't know yet. <laughs> and I'm like, literally white knuckles. We got, you know, Chris, we got the trainer, we got his buddy, Mike. And I just, um, the express boat, it's kind of tough. I don't like having to escape 
everyone is right behind me. And I'm like, I'll tell you, I'm, I'm fucking really nervous. You know what yeah. I mean? And I'm like, cause I want to catch the guy. He doesn't get any time off. He's a good guy. He's one of us. Like he could sit right here and talk fishing. Not, you wouldn't even know he's a tennis guy. Yeah. Most normal down to earth person. And I'm like, you know, I'm sweating and I'm like, everyone's staring. I'm like, I hope, I hope this fucking works. You know what I mean? Like, I hope this is not just an absolute fucking, you know, and of course I brought clams to go sea bass and to fucking, back up to the yeah. back. Oh, oh, we had, we were, oh, the we were ready to go. I probably didn't have sea worms. <laughs> oh. yeah, anything. Like, what can we get a plate on? And I'm like, yeah, we, maybe we got some beaky. Yeah. I'm yeah like, maybe I'll take a lot talk and just like bail. But then I'm like, no, nah, that, that's the, that's a fucking waste of fucking his time. Like he wants to do battle. Yeah. You know what I mean? So we stopped the boat and we knew there was a lot of squid there. So I remember shark takes us. I'm like, all right, get the squid rods. It's just barely even sun up. All right. Shark drops to the bottom. Two seconds. Boom. Fucking like 14 inch while ago. I'm like, yes. That's you know, awesome. That's the, okay. <coughs> there's a good start. At least there's bait. Shark drops again, takes one lift. Fucking rip, cleaned, you know, the whole Sabiki. God. God. Oh. What are you eating my tuna? <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah. I, I'm like, trying to keep my composure. Yeah. Bring him, mate. He's, get him, mate. He's so, like, so it's he's like, shark, what the fuck? <laughs> yeah, I'm like, dude, I'm, I'm, like, dude, I'm like, get him on the rod. You got to get me, you know? So then I look at the screen because we have a cockpit machine and I'm like, oh my God. Oh my God. <laughs> oh, yeah, you know? Yeah. I'm like, there, the there's like three of them and I know they're, they're bouncing off the bottom and I'm like, I just watched the one just cleaned house, yeah. you know, tee off on Shark Sabiki. <laughs> And my boss is like, get a rod in the water. I'm like, no, 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 hold on one second. And I just happened to like, let me just take two swings with a jig. And of course, like I dropped the jig on a 16. And like <laughs> I came up once and then, you know, that second when you're diamond jigging where oh, I don't feel the jig anymore. Yeah, you know what I mean? yeah. like, and I'm like, oh, you know, like I hope this is, and I'm like, it didn't look like a big mark. So we swing. And as soon as I swing, it came tight. I'm like, oh, it's not that big. You know, I'm like, oh, here you go, Tommy. And then the thing, of course, wakes up and just siderates a 16 VSX. <laughs> and the rod, we don't have a harness because it's like a jigging rod. Yeah. So we only have like 70. So now Tommy's fighting the fish. And I'm like, oh, God. He And he's just like kind of in this weird position. Now I'm like. Holy shit. He breaks his arm, breaks his ankle. No shit. I will have murder death threats at my house. And he's not playing in the US Open in two days. So now I'm like, no, don't, don't pull that hard. Don't pull that hard. You know, like, don't do it. And he's like sweating. He, I mean, things, you know, a nice fish. So he had to like take his sweatshirt off. Shark takes the rod. And I remember Shark starts pulling out. And he just looks at me. He's like, oh, it's a, it's a real one. I'm like, God. You know what I mean? <laughs> oh, no. You know? And, uh, Give it back to Tommy. Tommy gets settled. We get that, uh, yeah, whatever that hooky or whatever the that foam thing at the end. Yeah. We start fighting. Uh, yeah. Yep, start fighting it again. And like I see it go by, and I'm sure you guys have had it happen. Like it's in that green water. You look at the it, boat. You just saw the glow, and you're like, oh no. <laughs> <laughs> like I don't like, and he's just doing the wobble, and I'm like. Oh, you could, yeah. I'm like, oh God, oh no, oh no. And like, it does some weird circle and he just kind of like rolls over and we got two gaffs in him and it was literally like one of those, not 72 and three quarters, it was like a 72. Yeah. So it worked out because it was a closed day. It was closed at that time. So perfect. it was perfect. It was yeah. perfect. First fish. three minutes, was... I basically start, stop hyperventilating <laughs> and gasping for air, I'm like ready to throw up because I want to catch it. Oh yeah. And I know it has no leader on it because I just tied a jig on it. <laughs> so the jig is like, the the little knot is like this little nub sticking out. I'm like, wow, we got lucky. I'm like, you don't say. You know what I mean? <laughs> we get him, got the fish, run back up on another drift. Shark makes bait. And then every live squid we put down, you know. That's sick. 80 incher, 85 incher. You know, and it was a fun day. Had some... he had he ever caught tunas before? He's he's caught a couple. Nothing that big. Yeah, yeah. But after catching on the jig, he's like, "How about we use one of the big rods?" I'm like, <laughs> I'm like "Thank you, great idea." I was, idea. Like, I was, like, yeah. I was yeah. like, "Hell yeah!" Like, that's awesome. We, they... caught, we caught a couple yellow fins. At, yeah, you know, nice seven. Yes, yeah, nice yellow. We're only seven miles off the beach. You know, Sick. so in the middle of August, and now it's like eight in the morning. We already caught. I think we caught that one. We caught two like big shorts. And then we caught two keepers back to back. 
a Sabbath. Yeah, we yeah. for a yeah. half day. That's a yeah. Sabbath. Not even half day. No, oh, this, Sunday. Is, this, this is this like, is a Sunday by nine a.m. That's sick. There's a guy a quarter mile away from me staring at us, <laughs> and he's watching because I looked at my binoculars. And he's looking at me, <laughs> and he goes, "What? You just and then you've got on radio. You just catch another one." I'm like, "Yeah, we just got our sixth one." He's like, "We haven't even got a bite." I'm like, "Okay," <laughs> you know. And I, I didn't want to, yeah. you know. Obviously, it's one of our tricks on how we were catching them and in short fishing, like you guys have. So I'm like, "All right," and then we caught an 85 incher, and. Of course, you know, I'm sure you guys, what do you mean we got to let it go? Oh, yeah. You know, and yeah, I was like, that plenty of times. you know, and then we got to explain the, the whole rules and, and politics of blue fins and, you know, and it's tough for someone who's never the biggest fish of his life. It is. And, and I'm like, Psh, let it go. And everyone's like, ah. So we, we try to give the, like our passion speech at the very beginning of the day, just discussing. Right. I don't care if we kill them. I don't care if we let them go. Be like, what you guys are doing today is sh- is something that no one gets to experience. Yeah. Regardless Way of what hard happens. to let them go. Yeah. 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 Well, and we also had the sampling study going yeah. with Chris. So we had a little tail bit cuts, of cuts. Yeah. The tail, tail thing. The finlet Finlets. clips yeah. and all yeah. that. So they got to be involved. Yep. You know, and it's cool on the small boat releasing them too because it's right. It's, it's yeah. right there. You know, like they're touching the thing. It's Well, tail clips are a lot easier. I was thinking about yeah. that. Like, Oh, let me just reach over and get a tail clip. You know, <laughs> yeah. but stay there, little fellow. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. Waiting to get your head, your head, head in your rage, like celebrity death match. Is the thing, oh, like, dude. You know, yeah. and you're going for a clipping or something like it's that. It's hard. I have, yeah, it's super I have a hard. Picture I'm going to show. We're them. using the net, right? Yeah, I was using taking the manly cutters, holding the net yeah, underneath. Yeah, because you know. Me. Yeah. Well, let me keep clipping. You know what I mean? Like, yeah, yeah. give me get a haircut. <laughs> Well, speaking of getting hurt during a process like that, I have a picture that will be in the presentation at Castafari. I have a fucking Winthrop guide imprinted on my forehead from doing that because the rod, like with all the pressure and trying to get the release hook on, and the he freaked out and the rod spun a hundred, like one eighty is like from fully loaded forward to fully loaded aft, and I'm reaching over with the release hook, and it catches me right. You can see the WT yep. up the side <laughs> of my forehead. Fred would love that. Oh, yeah. yeah. That's, that's why Here yeah. yeah. you go, buddy. <laughs> yeah. But it, a, after we got done blue fitting, and I'm like, okay, we're good. We got our fish. We had to, like, arrange because we, we had the cameras, and, like, now we have to do this whole thing at the dock, weighing in. Nope, we're going sea bassing. You know, so then we, we, I steam back in shore and then we wreck sea bass for like an hour. That's we awesome. crushed yeah. the sea bass. It was yeah. awesome. I'm like, oh, I, I think this one should have them, you know, and like yeah. a couple small cod and like they had a great time, you know, and I'm like, holy shit, this actually worked out. <laughs> and I'm like, it's 11 o'clock. Yeah, all back, before noon. It was all before so noon. And the fact that it worked out, but I, I was. You feel lucky. Yeah. I was literally not, it was beyond lucky. Like that yeah. it worked out. He didn't get hurt. So like that was no. obviously my biggest fear that I'm like he gets ripped over the side, and breaks his arm in the hand, hook, something that he cannot play in the U.S. Open. The guy just worked his whole life for just for yeah. to go catch. You a see Mark out there with the sweat band on. Yeah. You know, yeah. You're taking psycho, my place, then, buddy. Yeah. Yeah, some psycho death threat, you know, person. But yeah. explain. Oh, he hurt his wrist. Like he's fighting the fish, and you know, I'm like watching him because I'm like the reels hitting the side of him. Uh. I go, please don't. Ah, you know, like yeah. I could just see. This is where good times go bad, you know. That's but, awesome, though. Was he stoked? Oh, uh, everybody was stoked. Everyone I was mean, stoked. I mean, we were stoked, everybody. Yeah, I was stoked. It's just one of those things that, thank God, like I... Yeah, you couldn't I'm not a religious person. Uh, yeah, obviously, you go to church, and uh, but I was praying the night before. I'm like, please, Dude. please, I will give up all big eyes the rest of this whole year. Please <laughs> let this guy catch a fish. There's some that are just so much sweeter than others. Yeah, yeah. and I'm sure you guys have taken... You know, the nicest people on the boat have the worst luck. Totally. The worst luck. And yeah. and the people that don't take it, you know, seriously. They're just literally. blessed with, oh, 10 big eyes today. Oh, have we caught yeah. 50 elephants? We didn't get 11? Yeah. 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 Oh, like, we didn't what? catch any Maui. We have to Maui's, let it go. You know yeah. what I mean? Yeah. Oh, we got to let that one go. Sir, your West Marine cooler does not have yeah. enough room for all this meat. Yeah. That you yeah. Another one's too big. It's like you just released your third 700 pounder. <laughs> when, when we get that. And com- you're going to sleep in your own bed tonight. <laughs> yeah. People it's... travel. That's, you know, I, I tell people we have some of the best fishing. Like after spending a lot of time in Florida, we have unbelievable fishing. which just out of disadvantage a little bit because you got to run far. Yeah. You got to be very multiverse. But 
the fact that you could go leave your marina, go catch a giant tuna, keep heading south, go to the water, catch a blue marlin, white marlin, wahoo, big eye yellowfin, swordfish, swordfish mahi, all in the same day if you if you really yeah, and got that's that a lucky. lifetime worth of fishing yeah, it's, for it's most a, people. It's an achievement of things. Yeah, you know, people travel all over the world, just like people that go to Canada with you guys. Yeah, hey, oh, no, you're good. Okay. Um, people that go to Canada, see, so raising my hand. You know, they go all over. Just like they go catch marlin, you know, whatever they want. But at any given moment, you could have that happen totally right here. It's just very hard because we have tough weather, t- tough conditions, short season, short season and mm-hmm. you got to be ready for anything. Yep. Yep. So. It's awesome. What are, the, think, what are the questions? I know you guys got some, dude, some questions. One thing, ask. one thing that Taylor and I were uh, talking about before we got here, because I don't think we've asked you this question before, uh, or both of you guys. But who do you, who do you aspire to be now? I mean, like you have clearly established. Both of you guys, your whole team, have established a reputation. You're extremely consistent, extremely prepared. There's a lot of people that look up to you. Yep. Who do you look up to? Can you go first? You guys oh, can God. think about it. Prince Shark, I mean, Shark I mean, Panama I mean, spot listen, right now. I'll tell you, like, I look up to Mark. Yeah. You know, like, straight up. Like, Jesus, I might make he, Mark tear up. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you know, like, it, it, I, learned, I learned how to fish from him. Yeah. How long you guys fish together? 12 years, probably. Wow. That's awesome. And you're still fucking with him. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> That's awesome. Yeah. You know? Long time. There's a lot of times he fucking hates me. I can be. A, I, I'll tell anyone, you know, I'm I'm a great guy. I hang out with outgoing, but when it's time to go to work, it's time to go to work. You know totally. I mean? That's it. You know, that's the way. There's times. I mean, we're family, right, and there's right, times where the three of us are one of yeah, Like yeah. Homer Simpson and Bart. Like, <laughs> I'm holding the harpoon about to stick a fish in me. But you know, Mark pushes me to be the best. <laughs> yeah. and expect the best. You know. Yeah, yeah. So it's like. But that's what you want. It's part of being a team. You know exactly. what I mean? Like you got to push each other to be better. Yep. You know, as I push him to be better, you know, because yeah. I know he, you know, he can do it. Yeah. Yeah. No, that's, that's a really good point. I wouldn't say I look up to one individual person. There's a lot of people that, I mean, like I said, I've had very good teachers. I mean, and you only learn from your teachers, you yeah. know, guys like Brett, you know, Brett's a good friend, but he, he's, Brett's been doing it, you know, a few more years older guy like Pete speeches, cookie Murray. There, there's professionalism, you know, there's people that I've learned a little bit from all of them. Mm-hmm. You know, I don't inspire, obviously I would be my, my own person, yeah. but I, I've gained so much knowledge about so many different things. Phil Delaney, my old, my old captain on the Canyon runner, even Mike Zajac, you know, Mike, yeah. you know, there, we all learn from each other. I wouldn't say I aspire to be one, you know, but if I could take a little bit and be better um, from each of them, but all, all those guys that I mentioned, all are in, you know, like core group that I look up to either as like a pseudo older brother, father figure, professionalism guy, uh, Danny Scotty runs a Dean Elisa, Bob Matthews runs the low bid. These are very professional guys that have had the same private boat jobs. They're been at the top of their game. You know, they've worked for the same families for some of them 30, 40 years. Yep. Um, and just being professional in the way you do it, um, Obviously, when you come on the boat, I'm a little bit different. Um, and I try to have fun and have a good time because when we try to overthink everything and I start getting, I spin myself out, it doesn't really You're work. You're professional, but you can't be too serious. Exactly. And when I get like overly serious, it's not good. Yeah. I, I just put so much pressure on me, everyone else. It puts bad juju on the whole boat, bad vibes, and nothing works out. You know, you start losing stuff. People start to hesitate. Yeah. That, that's, yeah. you know, like I said, we... You watch a video of us fighting fish. It's pretty much very, very boring. So boring. Yeah. It's like, unless there's some music, you're like, okay. You know, there's no even talking. Like, not lift. Rah! You guys practice that. a lot, though. That's huge. It's the same you know? situation over and over and over. And I'm not a Kansas City fan, per se, but it's like what happened this year in uh, the Super Bowl. It's fourth and two. Mahomes gets the ball. He knows. He's gonna. He's going for the first down. Yeah. He's taking it under control. And like you be in the same situation, and that's something I got to do because I've been fishing my whole entire life. I've been in a lot of bad situations, you know, either safety wise or or whatever that we talked about before, or we got to get a bite in a tournament. We need to catch a couple more for points, whatever it is. But making a power move or making a move in the middle of the night, 
you know, be like, I don't know if this is going to work. And we're like, we're really doing this? I'm like, yep, this is what we're doing. Mm. You know, and Shark always knows. He goes, do what you do and whatever trust, you and trust, trust. Trust yourself. Yeah. Trust. Yeah. Do, we don't think. And that's why it's like, he trusts me. I trust him. All right, go. If he wants to put more drag on the fish, let him. He knows how the rod pulls more than anyone. Yeah. You know, it's all, you know, he, he knows he's got the right harness. The reel's perfect. The line's perfect. You know, the parabolic bend, the guys, you know, nothing's going to break. So we already know how that's going to end. And go ahead. You want to pull? Go ahead and fire away. You know, and I know it's, he's not going to overly pull. You're not going to get anxious and try to catch a thing too quick or, you know, there's all timing with everything. And that's something that, to, right, definition of insanity is something over and over again, expecting to get some result. <laughs> yeah, you know? pretty much, yeah. You yeah. know, it's giant tuna fishing over and over <laughs> yeah, again. Yeah, yeah. You know, staring at a balloon, watching the balloons bob around in the whole ocean. Yeah. Sometimes uh, I, I look back at, like, what we've done day by day by day, and I think we're literally insane. Uh -huh. How many hours of a day you're just sitting there just staring. Yeah. Same thing. Like, like uh, you know, you get up. We all look at our Instagram stories. <laughs> Here goes the cup of coffee. If I did mine every day, you see me, like, wearing my teak out. Pacing <laughs> back and forth. You know, rigging. And I'm retying all the knots. And I'm like, all right. That you just tied. Yeah. <laughs> like, no, nah, didn't like that. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, but that's, it's just an, it's an OCD thing mixed in with being professional, mixed in with, I only stand for the best. It's a de-stressor too. You know, like if you know if you fix it in that moment, then you're not fucking white knuckling it when you have oh, the yeah. one on. Yeah. You There's know? a lot of things that I get questioned about my boss, about my punctuality and why are we doing this and you're nuts and doing that. But that's all part of it. You know? Yeah, like, for sure. You know, and that's how we, you have a good track record and, and you consistently catch them over and over and over again. And that's how you do better, obviously, in tournaments. You know, everyone's going to get lucky. You know, there's always a bigger one, it's, yeah. you know, but as long as you get a bite during it, that's, yeah. you know, and there's so many good fishermen now, you know, they really are. I mean, it's the, the caliber of, uh, people, boats, teams, and it's a team sport. I don't care. And that's one thing I learned in Florida, sail fishing. It might not be this big game, you know, backing down and, and, you know, big fish and wiring and anything like that. But on, you know, you, you watch the guy sail fishing, it's a team of eight guys Kite guys, rods coming in and out, and it's a pit crew. It's mm -hmm. like a NASCAR thing. How fast can you go, not make a mistake, and catch the most amount of stuff in the shortest amount of period? It's not a, a giant tuna where they're pulling on it, you know, and you're fighting in the chair. It's, fina for it's finesse attention to detail. Yeah. It's all it's all little things, right? Yeah. You guys just making leaders, making sure everything's perfect. Mm -hmm. I'm sure you guys make leaders this time of year like we all do, and you have everything kind of in some bins. It's like a starting thing. But when you do it in your own house, under a nice condition, you're relaxed. You know, every crimp is perfect. You know, every piece of chafe gear is right. Every hook is right. The leaders, you know, it's not like... Ch -ch -ch -ch. And then there's some times where you just don't care. Yeah. And it works out. Yep. You know, I'm not promoting that, but I see a lot of people kind of fumble through things. Like there's me like prepping out two years in advance. And then someone <laughs> who just like, Clips out a lure, yeah. snap swivels a live bait, snap swivel on. to the hook, you know snap I mean? swivel to the 230 spro. Yeah, like, oh, yeah, those are good ones. <laughs> yeah. You know? yeah, yeah, but no, bro, no problem. Get slodged in a tip, yeah. and the fish still lays there upside down. Yep, the best is when I used to take and you, you probably do this, you probably still do this. You get in like 20, 30 used bars from somebody that you need to rebuild. Oh, yeah, and the freaking the gems that you see. Oh my god! The hooks with like another hook and a snap swivel in between them, or snap like snap swivel with a plastic still over the hook. It's Mel like melted on. on. Oh. That, was a, that was a real good one. We had we had the we had the hook on, uh, and then the ballyhoo chunk still on the hooks. Oh yeah, yeah that was granny the, knot in the in the oh, four hundred mono. Or you'd see the knot, yeah, yeah. You'd yeah see the knot the, in the squid <laughs> somewhere, yeah. and yeah. you go to cut it off, and you're like, <laughs> what, what is going on? Yeah, he goes, like, yeah, what? we caught probably twenty fish <laughs> on it. Like, Meanwhile, you and I would be the thing would be imploded <laughs> yeah. before it yes. comes out of the pit. Oh exactly. yeah, you know? and he's like, nah, the hook yeah. is beyond dull. What are you Ooh. talking about? Yeah, like, what are you talking about? It's rusty. It's rust. Squids are all flat. Yeah, it doesn't matter. And they're all in this, like, you, you know, you take the bar out and 30 <laughs> bars come out together. Yeah. You pretty much just drop it back down. You're like, nope. And every yeah. squid's bent like this. Yeah. 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 Yep. Oh, you got you to, like, clean them with pledge. And, like, yeah. And it's it's three times as much work. I said, might as well just buy new shit because it it's costs way more money to re-rig stuff and time. and um, to, Confidence, too. Yeah. 
oh, to, to, re, to redo it. I mean, that's what we do in the, in the fall. Like we, and I tell everyone, we don't do it actually in the winter. We actually do it when we're still fishing in that mindset. Obviously the boat travels and we're fishing all the time, but when we're done tuna fishing, we, we make leaders. you know, like, when we're done in October, we're like, all right, we got to redo all these bars. And we yeah. know it's fresh in our head. We, we got to change this and I got to drop the birds back and I got to, you know, that way, you know, everything is perfect. We take everything we use every trip. It goes in a separate bin. Does not go back in with the with the new stuff. We're a little bit more day to day, just because we don't have to have the variety of rigs. Yeah, we get you like guys one do. to three bites. And plus, we're so con- it's so condition dependent on the type of fishing that we're doing. It's like we don't know if we're fishing one thirty or two hundred for the day. Yeah. You know, so it's it also just keeps our tackle a little tidier. I feel. Are there certain leaders you don't get a bite on? Do you have like a like a a juju about? You know, we put this leader out. It's if, been out for if six my, days. I won't put. I will not put a floater leader out that isn't at least three fathoms. That's one thing that I'm adamant about. Like okay. it could be two inches short on my third and like, pole. Eh, and not like, for me. Oh, yeah. I don't know. Yeah, yeah. You know? I'd say leader length. And most of that's just like our distances are so you know precise. precise, precise. Yeah, well, you, you know? know your down angle. The way yeah. your boat versus, you know, the, the line chai sits versus exactly. you know, the big boat. I'm yep. sure it's different the way the sinker lays. Yep. You know, you watch, I pay attention to the way you guys have them banded and the way you have a T10 mounted yep. with the down rod. I'm like, okay, that's interesting why they did that, you know. And it's probably all boats are different. That's yep. But that's what works for you. Mm-hmm. You know, my boat, a little bit different. I might not rock. I don't have a sea keeper, but... I might not rock or the boat's drifting at a different pace. Yep. So you want the angle changed a little bit. Or you want the sinker a little further away. Yeah. You know. It's a recipe at the end of the day. I mean, you're all working towards the same meal, but you might use a couple different little ingredients depending on what your flavor is going to be at the end of the day. All depends on the bite too. Like those days you go out, you just know, like the fishing's been incredible and the weather's perfect and you just know that it's going to be ferocious. Yeah. It's like there'll be, <laughs> there'll be, there'll be days that you know going out, like we'll use that 15 foot leader. Yeah. Yeah. Well, you, you know, know when they're biting, like, they're biting. That's, yeah. Right. You know, I tell everyone that and that's, they You're going for the one bite though, where everything has to be exactly the, like yeah. it's supposed to be. Yeah. 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 It's got to be perfect and yeah. it's got to be white. And, we're wondering the whole time, the whole day. Yeah. You know? uh, what if what if what if right. right there's i do i do that all the time what if i went here what if i go there you know canyon fishing is a lot different you've you're in the middle might as well be, you're in the middle of a you know a haystack basically yeah. Oh, yeah. you yeah. know oh, yeah. and the problem is down by us when we're fishing i'm saying from let's say from west atlantis going east there's not a lot of boats so there's no coverage i'm not saying i'm not inviting boats you but don't when know you go up to the west like in the hudson there's a lot of coverage so you know what's on the west side of the canyon versus the east side. You can't possibly cover every spot at different times of the day. And, and the east side might be better in the morning, but the west side's better in the afternoon. You're not going to know that because if you stop at the east side in the morning and you catch fish there, you're not, not going to go. It there. You're not You're not going wandering over eight miles away and be like, oh, let me go see what's over here. Right. Yep. You know, And then you have to kind of read between the lines of who catches what. You know, if, okay, that guy caught three, I should be able to catch nine. Mm-hmm. You know, or what did he see that, you know, it's, it's almost, uh, what, you know, what people don't see is, is what I'm like, Oh, did he see that? No. Yeah. We saw a hundred shear waters, but we, yeah, we didn't get any bites, you know, like, yeah. that's yeah. Really? Yeah. You're like, really? You're like, really? You don't want to go there. I'm like, no, we do. No, yeah. we do. And, and it's happened, you know, like they were just there at the wrong time Yeah. and yeah. they got frustrated quick because they listened to the radio and they just, oh, they're wrecking Those over fish here. moved on. Those oh, shearwaters yeah. are on the I can tell you, now. the night we went five for seven, it was on a spot where, you know, I'm not going to say what canyon we're in, but we were on the west side all day because we were wrecking, wrecking fish. There was blue fins. There was big eyes. There was loads of yellow fins. And I was just not being stubborn. I was like, I don't even need to go down there, you know. And then it, I find out that, you know, just by listening to a Florida guy, was on a the other corner it was on the southeast corner and i'm like watching him on iis and i'm like i see him stopped and i'm like oh maybe he's just you know i don't know what he's you know who knows what he's doing it's it just he doesn't he's never been fishing up here i'm like oh maybe he's fighting the blue marlin you know he was i saw he was plug fishing we went by him in the morning he had two dredges out i'm like oh maybe he's on a blue one and then like he got on the radio to like say to some guy yeah we've been on these big guys for three or four hours and i'm like 
oh my god oh my god <laughs> you know so i like immediately go wandering down there and like i kind of had an idea of where he was and i remember we went sword fishing that night we had like a couple little crappy little bites or maybe we caught a little one or something like that and at like 2 30 i'm like all right nope or three maybe three i'm like let's go let's set in he's like i'm like ready i'm like I know where they are. And like, I went, I made a, like a long pass when I was just driving. And I marked them like a 350 or 400. I marked three fish. I'm like, night, night, you know, yeah. you're mine. Yeah. And made like another real pass where you, you know, down sea tack, down current, lined it up all right. And I, it was just perfect. Some wasn't up yet. And phew, here they come. Yeah. You know, then we call in Teddy, who's literally a boat length away. This is how crazy the canyon fishing is this year. He was, I'm like, Teddy, I'm on. He's like, all right. He's like, I'm, I'm pulling on something now, but I see he's literally maybe 300 yards that night. He comes on my port side, which is where they were coming from, hooks nine blue fins in the dark in the canyon, 77 degrees. Wow. Nine, like, ha like buck 50 blue fins. He goes, what do you got? I'm like, I got five big eyes now. He's like, what? You know what I mean? That's and, crazy. Yeah. So it goes to show you that one tack or one little knot of fish was there. Then like five of the boats saw us both stop. No one had to bite the rest of the day. It was over. And then that spot, that's it. They were just there that's at it. that that little feeding time at night and off they go. That's, so, that's insane. Intel. Intel is very, and reading between the intel, right? Good yeah. intel. Dissecting, Dissecting the intel. Real, the intel. real intel. Yeah. You know, yeah. Like, like, what's he really saying on the radio? Yeah. Like, what, yeah. Well, now, can you hear the tone of somebody? Yeah. Now yeah. there's no radio. Which yeah, is great. Right. In reach. Oh, no, in reach. We no, have Starlink. Starlink. So Starlink. Yeah, that's true. So I might as well just keep it on 16 and be like, I was calling him. Like, oh, you know, let's see, got my cell phone number. You ain't talking to me. <laughs> yeah. You know? But the Starlink has changed. Changed the game for changed sure. Changed everything. Everyone go offshore. You have full service, every chart, everything imaginable. I mean, you can't even. You can't. For 250 bucks, you would pay a 250 every single trip. That's 250 a month to have unlimited data. Yeah. You know? I yeah. can FaceTime you guys as we're trolling. We can do a <laughs> lot. You can do the podcast. Yeah, you can do a podcast. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Lot, couple, that's lot. Like, yeah, my wheels yeah. spinning a little bit. Yeah. You can do it right from there. And, yeah. And, but the the safety thing, the you know, you don't need all this sat phone in reach. You just need that. Obviously, I still have an in reach to put in our ditch bag. Yeah. Because I don't care if they want to charge me ten thousand dollars a minute. You're gonna have. You know, thing. come get me right now. Yeah. yeah. You yeah. know, we are here, so it stays in the bag. We actually keep two of them on there, and. uh you know, that's, it's a big part, you know, I can't, that's probably the biggest game changer in sport fishing right now. That and sonar probably. Yeah. Yeah, for yeah. sure. So, sonar definitely, but in reach for the actual practical person. Yeah. You know, for. It's been huge. That's been, been a huge us. tool yeah. for us. Yeah. 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 Like it, yeah. it's not even worth having an in reach. It's worth, it's worth just putting the Starlink on because. You have full communication with everything. It doesn't matter. I'm sure you guys have certain spots where you have one bar and you're like, oh, you know. Our, our like three best spots are the only spots. No service. Service. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. But the inReach is also bad because I'm sure you guys have seen it. There's such a long delay. Yeah. Sometimes when it sends, when someone actually is sitting there because it doesn't automatically just download instantaneously. Yeah. You'll get like 10 messages at once. And you're like, and that was, for you guys, that's a lot. 45 minutes because it could have been a bite right before the slack. Right. Now, you either got to just... Throw, leave your ball there if you guys are anchored up and just hammer down to wherever you you know the other boat is yeah, right. you know but starlink we're on like instantaneously like you could tell when there's we have a code a couple of us when it's just letters you know what i mean we just i just like press anything you know to come to that other guy yeah. you know like, get you right now mark just sent me hieroglyphics yeah. you must go yeah. you gotta leave you gotta be i don't know route. what it means but it's yeah, yeah. yeah you know I'm like let's you gotta be here right now we all know and we're all working together and it just it helps because then it it gives us enough time it gives us opportunity to capitalize yeah. on a bite Yep. And that's how you know, obviously, you're, it, I call it like the real truth serum, you know. Um, and some people don't reciprocate. They'll tell you, and then they don't reciprocate. I'm like, all right, you know. And, uh, you know, it, it's me and uh, my buddy George on the Crisdell and one of my real good friends. I mean, we tell each other every time something breathes on a rod. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, I think I saw him on the right long. You know <laughs> yep. what I mean? Yeah. So, but we're always in tune and be like, and you put the kind of the story together 
and you see it progressing throughout the day. And when you look back in all the texting, it, it's like, oh, that's why it came together. And then you look at the water shot and windy. I mean, for us too, like a lot of the comms, like an example would be, you know, being that we have the two boats, one's fast, one's not. <laughs> but like, even just, you know, how's the bait look? Or I'm marking, I'm marking. All right, do you have them up and down? Are they passing through? Like, and then you can kind of put the pieces of the puzzle together like all right they're not feeding here but they're feeding here or they're traveling to feed on this bait and they can start putting the whole recipe together i mean for you guys it's only a couple it's really say july august september october it's four months it's, yeah. it's a thousand dollars yep in the scheme of it it's the same as a sat phone what's the hardware it's just a dish was it probably 14 by 14 and it's just powered by yeah a square dish yeah a square dish and mounts facing forward and it's right to a router and plug it in the outlet that's oh. it see for the little boat obviously it's tough yeah you know a generator or anything like that but fucking sure. driving around with this radar oh, yeah on the <laughs> yeah <laughs> shit everywhere <laughs> <laughs> look yeah. like the Ghostbusters vehicle oh yeah, yeah. I have shit welded everywhere yeah. you know it's never big enough right I'm sure the little boat is you know but. What boat do you guys like fishing on? Dude, it's a it's a it's toss a straight up for toss me. Up. It's a straight really? toss up. I, the weather. I, <laughs> the weather is. I think I overall prefer the big boat, but I think actually fighting fish, I think oh, you can catch boat. more yeah. fish with the yeah. little boat. Of course, yeah. yeah. Especially you, in a you crowd, can, a, you, you can, whip their ass on the little well, boat. Well, as long as obviously you guys have everything double backing plates and yeah. Yeah. Chris makes an unbelievable rod yeah. holder. You know, we haven't snapped our teak yet out of the rebel, so soft. You know, yeah. That's you get solid. that like 45 degree angle and if he's it's if direct. swimming away, it's like that thing's going to get so tired so yeah. fucking yeah, fast. Yeah, well, even to put the rod in the bow and just like put yep. 45 pounds, have fun. Yep. You know, hold me <laughs> around, you yep. know. I mean. Yeah, it tires him out quick. The big boat though, the big shadow on the bank, it's just, it can be a, on the down a, a game. Yeah. It's a game changer. It is yeah. crazy. It really like, is. We'll, like, go, we'll go through weeks. We we'll, might as well not even fish another rod. Yeah. Uh, but there are days with a small boat with the kind of sneaky, you know, lighter profile, I guess, on the water when the fish are been pressured. Well, Sometimes you get that bite because they squeak well, through you, that little spot in the fleet and it's like... You could also yeah. fish lighter leader on the, on the yeah, little good, boat yeah. because you're not driving as much. Well, you could drive a whole lot less and put the line on the reel. Yep. And you could back off on the drag because the drag is going to be taken away by using a little boat. Yeah. So it might... But I'm sure when it gets windy... I didn't want to be on the big boat. Yeah. You know. Yep. Yeah, no, I like both. It's fun. It's nice to change it up every once in a while. There is something about taking water over the transom oh, versus like just bang, yeah. <laughs> pour it on them. But yeah, it uh, is kind of anticlimactic yeah. chasing one down on the small boat. Because you're putting a line on the reel very at a very, very fast pace. Yeah. Yeah. And you get like all the the main bulk of the line back and then you know all right he's only 50 feet to the leader yeah right you're like all right we we, we got him you know it was tough early season we had some really nasty water early season which is why i think the herring didn't really stick like they stuck the last few years it was just this long story short rumors and people talking it was some type of algae we had in the water that just didn't go away like a like a you it was like it sediment. Like it was almost like silt. Mud. Yeah. Hmm. And, um, and that was in July? Into like June, very, July. June, July into the eh. very, very beginning of August, I think. Yeah, maybe. But yeah, that's all, good for the leaders. Almost every fish. And what's funny is it didn't it didn't Touch mung the up the leaders. It's just every kill shot, the swivel was like... Buried. Two, yeah, two turns on the reel before you could even see it. Yeah. You know? And like one tens you can't fighting see. fish for a long time. Yeah. Because you're like you're waiting until things land. In a situation on the side, like dead. that in the little boat sucks. Yeah, well well you can't see also the perception of your Yeah. Versus, you can't tell if you get them late you have them laid over on the He's gotta side. be right there. Yeah, exactly. So many so many of those fish we'd have up to the boat when you're like holding the harpoon, you're like, you know that if it was a normal day. He's dead. Yeah. Yeah. You're like, I could stick him right now. This water didn't suck. That'd be easier to harpoon off a of probably bigger boat too. Because, totally. You know, oh, you get the, so the big boat, space. you're right Same there way. in the space. And I'm sure you guys have run out of space. I yeah. Mean, yeah. The amount of crap. You and you bring. can survive a rollover on the big boat. Like even if you have them perfectly patterned and just something weird happens, like you take a heave weird or and he just rolls over, then at least you have a dart chart opportunity on the other side. The little boat, you're just fucking have to make a drastic maneuver to get them back in those same pinwheels, right. you know? But 
It's fun. It is fun. All right, you got what other questions we got? We got any questions from people at home? What are, what are you? <sighs> what are some questions that we've got through the Patreon group recently that we might be able to ask here too? I mean, people have obviously different opinions. We had one. We had one just like like simple. Th- we kind of asked you this before, but just simple prep things to be fast in the moment. Like, are there any? Like, like, aside from make sure you have elastics and extra shit, pockets, day kit. Like, we've kind of talked through Pretty all that. value do you rig? Yeah. A lot. <laughs> yeah. I mean, we rig all that stuff the day before, basically, yeah. right? Yeah, everything's prepped the day before. Like, that's that's on a shark standard prep out four packs of selects, a pack of mediums, and a pack of dinks. Yeah. Ready to go. Plus, we have our... Rigged or just, like, no, prepped? No, prepped. Prepped. Okay. prepped. Everything we could rig on the way out, you know. So like a shark or my boss will rig, you know, a couple split bills, a couple, you know, we can get everything started, but everything's prepped, but a lot of bait prepped. Yeah. You know, you don't want to be, unless it's really good fit. I'd rather be throwing the valley who's away at the end of their trip yeah. than not having enough ready to go. Um, on all your single stuff, are you running all of that direct connect or are you running snaps on your flat line so you can swap that stuff out quicker? Everything we fish is uh, basically direct connected. The only thing we have snap swivel now is when we're going yellowfin fishing. Yeah. Because the snap swivel is, you're just adding a, a failure rate. Yeah. You know, the snap, every snap opens, mm-hmm. um, especially you learn from guys in Hawaii, you know, if fish is tailing away, blue marlin, and you got a snap swivel, and say it's a real big one, he got the tail wrapped, he starts whacking his tail, open snap swivel, see you later. Yeah. And they'll open the swivel. So that's why yeah. direct connection, big ball bearing swivel, when you're leadering anything like that, um, is important. Yeah. Or winding the swivel. Uh, we wind everything on the rock. So you're doing direct connect even on like your Marlin hardheads and all that shit. Everything too. has all of our stuff has uh you know, I'll either crimp a you know a 300 pound ball bearing swivel onto the rod and then everything is open-ended gotcha. and then i'll just crimp it as we go gotcha. and i'll take the time every single time and the same thing goes for every lure every uh you know um every shoot that we tie everything is direct yeah. clean presentation you know I've, I've seen too many snap swivels open up yeah and obviously no one has accountability in the tackle industry yeah. but like everything's being made cheaper the wire's softer you know, you whack it, thing opens up, and I'm sure you've seen yeah, it. Yeah, we electrical tape all our bars and we're trolling for, for giants. Yeah, because yeah. that's just it's a failure rate. Obviously, yeah. that's different. Um, but if we built the bars, like looking back on it now, I when I build all my bars, I should have just built the bars with a ball bearing swivel instead of a loop for myself personally. Yeah, you know, like a heavy duty ball bearing, um, and that way, you know, because they're ours, you make the tag end longer so if we got to cut it back a little bit but obviously that takes more time and there's our bars and versus everyone else's bars yeah. you know it, it's a lot of time yeah people don't that's one thing on planet earth we don't have enough of right it's time right. Mm. you know hmm. yeah anything else you got just trying to think of like topics not really covered that'd be interesting i like the nighttime stuff um I do like sail fishing for any of my South Florida friends that are listening. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you were just locked up abroad. Yeah. Uh, locked up abroad. <laughs> you can see he's contemplating I'm going con- there. You know what? You, know, <laughs> you might just leave that out. Uh, it. <laughs> it's, I, I call it a hostage crisis with no negotiator. Um, it grows on you, sail fishing. It's just not my thing. I do like it when they're biting, but there's some long days that you can't. It's not like our fishing where you could kind of change it up. When it's not happening, it's just not – it's not going to happen. Yeah. The edge is in there. The bait's not there. It's, you, might, you might as well go home, you know. Have you had any bluefin encounters down there yet? I have in the past. Um, been the same as, like, Brad who's done it. I learned sail fishing from Brad and from Carullo. And, I, you know, it's a knife to a gunfight. You, yeah. you just see them. You know, I'm sure we all saw that video. <laughs> yeah, that's that, why I brought it got, up. You don't have a chance, a fighting chance. Yeah. And then most of the people don't know in Florida, you're not even allowed to keep them. Yeah. It's closed. So um, there's a lot of bluefins right now in the Bahamas, you know, in, in 
in uh, over in Chubb, there was a lot in the yep. pocket. Um, so, but you know, you, you could fight the thing for an hour, you know, hours and not even have a you see yeah, it. They're still yeah. eating. Yeah, they're still just you know, <laughs> you still see just it. down there. You're eating. just tailing down. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. nothing is affecting that one X circle. If it's not a thirty pound floral is not tiring them out. Yeah. Um, same goes for the elephants. You know, if you get jumped by those big. 100, 150 pound elephants, you hear of like probably three a year yeah. get caught. And sometimes people just get lucky and then most of them break them off. You know, it's, it's not happening. You got a lot of current. And once that fish tails you back offshore, there's a, you know, you have the Gulf Stream right there. The rod's just going to bend. He's just going to lay in the current. You're done. You know, and you can't horse him up on a 20 pound rod. You can only pull so hard and you can't do anything that's going to change. You know, it's only 20 pound test. Yeah. You know. It puts everything in perspective too when we fight stuff on like seven foot one thirties. Yes. With like two hundred pound jack high, you know what I mean? You're worried about breaking it off. You know? <laughs> You're like, oh, maybe we catch them on twenty pound today. Yeah. You know. Yeah. But it goes to show you, you pull, they pull. Some guys do get them. Brett got one. He said in a tournament when yeah. he was listening. Um, so it's it's possible. It's possible, mm. but. I, I'm all set with that. Yeah, I'm good. You know, Shark can fight that. Yeah, yeah exactly. I don't like fighting yeah. fish. Yeah. I, I find like a couple things a year that I'm like, what the fuck am I doing? You yeah. Know what I, mean? I like gaffing leader. Do you enjoy it or you do it? No, I enjoy, I enjoy it. Yeah. I think it's competitive. Like, you know, you versus. Better, what's better the biggest battle you've ever had? Probably the giant, right? Stand up. Yeah, the giant place. standing up in a canyon was. was uh, I forget how long it was, but long time a couple of five hour battles so we've had five hours you're the only one on the rod stand up yeah oh my god that's a long time <laughs> we split a blue marlin me jimmy and him like 800 that that was that sick. morning we caught a blue first fish we didn't even troll like four or five minutes and we got a little outrider out with a medium like a little 80 <laughs> hook that you know we're just trying to catch bites yeah you know you catch a white on it catch whatever catch a yellow fin and uh you know mama duke's coming rolling in you know <laughs> and, and i'm like oh it's a blue one i'm like oh yeah I'm like i look like a white bill to me and then like you see it roll and i'm like oh my god <laughs> <laughs> and then it jumps and we have a there's a video on my instagram a thing just ripping jumps and it's so big you can't even get out of the water and i'm like oh <laughs> and we fight it we got him i got i grabbed the leader it was so big i debated on like we have uh, you know, aspirations of killing a big one. I want to kill a big one. It was close. Uh, be cool. Yeah. It was anything over nine. I'll do. Yeah. Because you could fight the the fight of you. Why would you kill it? Yeah. Um, on the canyon runner, we always had a. Uh, it was a standing bet that if we caught a grander, if you kill it, Adam would buy us a presidential Rolex. But if it if you called it. <laughs> And you missed, you would divide him a presidential. <laughs> oh, <laughs> Jesus. So you it's a good bet. Sure. Me and Say Jack Cook one, one time where Mike looked up to me and I'm like, oh man, uh oh. <laughs> you know, like, are we going to do this? And you're looking uh, down. Yeah. Uh, we had Damien Romeo, rest, uh, rest his soul, an unbelievable angler. And he straps in for like, you know, an eight. Damien used to bring these crazy lures, you know, oh, yeah. before. He bought everything. Everything. Any new lure you could possibly yeah, think of, Yeah, and he, he put this buy. thing out. I'm like, don't even fucking put that thing out. Like, that's what they use, like, in Kona. You know what I mean? He goes, and he talked to someone. He goes, no, this is the lure. Someone <laughs> sold him on it. And I just remember it was sunset on Southwest Corner, and this thing came. It was one of the biggest animals I've ever seen. It came paddling in, and it just, like, sucked it in and just kept swimming away. I'm like, <laughs> <laughs> and Mike looked at me, and I'm like, Holy shit, it's our fish. This is it. And like, he's like, get the gaff. You know? <laughs> I remember, I'm like, dude, we're going to be here all fucking night. And then it ended up, we got dumped because it ate a to 70 and 600 yards. It got, it got me stretched out. I was backing up and we broke it off in the belly. Oh. It just, we, it dumped like four or 500 yards. Honestly, it was not even a chance for on a 70. I, I usually think that you have a shot. The thing you know, when the reel goes so fast, shuts the clicker off. <laughs> yeah. and I was like, hold. And the thing's rip We're just staring at it in, a, in sheer amazement. And it's just ripping jumps. As fast as it's the water, it was out of the water. And I'm like, wow, this thing's, this is it. This is our, you know, I'm like getting the, ga every gaff. 
I've ever owned Parfums. <laughs> we were gonna go full 300 on this thing, right? <laughs> full kill everything, and then we just ended up breaking it off. And you know, Damien was sitting there with like a sourpuss on him. He goes, "We gotta get bigger reels." Next thing you know, you know, he wants to troll all 130s on the candy runner. Yeah. I'm like, no, oh, we'll just keep fishing, you know. And I'm like, wow, you know. And I remember that one in particular. Yeah. But Shark and Jimmy both looked at me, and they were like, with the 800, I'm like. Is this going to be the one? And I and I was going to say, get the, and then we broke it off. <laughs> yeah, we were going to grease it. Um, but I want to make sure if we, ca- you know, catch it, I want to make sure it's a, yeah, yeah, yeah I, I'm not. One and done. Yeah, yeah. I've killed a couple 600s in tournaments, killed a 700. I want to make sure, I, I don't need to kill one. I'd rather, I, honestly, I'd rather see it swim, but you catch a super, anyone tell you the, you know, Joe Byer, right? any of your buddies tell you, catch those super big ones and, you're gonna wear it out, totally. and hopefully, it, hopefully it you know walks back. That one Tyler got was big, seven eighty. Yeah, he caught that rip. Yeah, was that yeah. nine something? I, no, uh, so Tyler was, and Dre. Yeah, this yeah. the record. Yeah, it was this like only seven? Right up around yeah. eight hundred. I shouldn't say only yeah. seven something. Yeah. It's a big yeah. fish. Tyler's caught a lot of big ones. Yeah, you're right next yeah. to him when they. Hooked yeah, him. I remember yeah. that. Yeah, Tyler's That's someone nice I would one. like to see. That was a very quiet. Person. Yeah, yeah. We've talked to him a few times. Yeah, he, he's great guy. Tyler's traveled. The planet. Yeah. And Drayson is, that's, you know, yep. he's got family vintage history in, in sport fishing. Very, you know, very professional guy. Yeah, you know, extremely he's, professional. And he, he's got the, you know, the opportunity and to kill big ones and stuff like that. Mm. I remember when he killed that one, I'm like, oh, man, there's some, he knows there's some sea creatures. Yeah. You know, that's what I tell her. The World Cup's going to be one year the, the water's going to line up where you can go fish in West Atlantis and someone's going to catch in 800 and you're That'd going to be, be able to com- compete with Madeira and Kona. But the only downside for that wor- world cup tournament, it's one day of 24 hours. You're limiting yourself, you know, to catch it, bring it in. Yeah. You know, you got four or five hours of running. So you're putting yourself at a disadvantage where you just roll out of Kona. You're like, yeah. put the riggers down. <laughs> okay. There's the bell buoy. Yeah. yeah. And they got the most opportunity, same as the Azores, the most opportunity. On the yeah. Line. Well, since you just got back from, what was it, Panama? Panama, yeah, Boca del Toro. Sick. Yeah. Where's some other place? Where's like the place you've had in your mind that you want to go? New Zealand. New Zealand would be sick. I've what? been to the Azores. Azores is up there yeah. for me. Yeah. Azores, Azores are, are so close. Azores, <laughs> obviously, they have big eyes, so we would probably be the only people on planet Earth. <laughs> yeah, but, it'd be know, great. Drive away from the blue. <laughs> 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 yeah. Like what? Ha- like I'm just saying, I'm thinking about it. they don't leave till like six. What happens after 4 p.m.? Like, what happens there at sundown? I know. Can you imagine? Like, what else oh lives God. there? What is the bottom fishing? Like, there must, you know, the wahoos that must be there. You know, yeah. The, dropping. Yeah. It must you know be the big eye. Like when, so when, when Joe was telling me about fishery. the yeah. big eye fishing there, I was like, don't t- stop talking. You know what I mean? Like, if you troll, knew how to troll or trolled a big squid bar there with no hooks. Yeah. <laughs> we had, dude, we had bars packed. We had everything. Yeah, we were three days for away. Gomera. Oh, really? Then, then we had everything was th- ready oh, to go. Yeah, COVID to shut it do like false light fishing there too. Yeah, and then it shut it all down. New I'd Zealand. like to go there. New Zealand for that sword fishing. That's the only. Yeah, it's pretty. They have cool. some. Oh, they they use like skipjack. Yeah, yeah. 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 like right? Stancic went there. Uh, we call it seven hundred. Yeah, you know, and then he went back here going. To, yeah. you know, but. They catch a lot. You just see those Australian pictures online, oh, and you massive. see the kilos. You're like, you look first, like oh, 300, and it's like not 300 kilos. Yeah, and they're huge, and there's massive. like little boats that are just like yeah, just... weekend guys. They're not professional, right? And then there's some really good charter boats mm. there, but obviously it's very very rough, and hmm. um, that's like a bucket list of something to go do. Yeah, How far offshore is it there? I haven't done enough research no. yet. I think you got to go pretty far. Because if I'm going, I'm going for like three weeks. You know, I'm going. I'm, I'm, I'm dumping the old savings account. Yeah. And to go there. you know. I would like to do Alaska. I'd, I'd like there. to do just something completely different from it's what we do. Up there. I could do the Yeah. Yeah. What, the guy, one of the guys I grew up fishing with, this guy, Joe Calandra, uh, his name's Eyeglass Joe. He goes out of Tanaku Lodge. He goes up there every you know, he and I, he specializes in like catching big ones because he's psycho and he's from New York. Yeah. He's like, oh, 40 pound king salmon, that's a trophy. And he's like, he'll tell me he'll like gut it right there and smoke it back out. And everyone's like, <laughs> no, you know. And he's like, nope, that's going for bait. 
and he was telling me, you know, there's all kinds of other, they have octopus, they have all kinds of yeah. crazy, but it's during our, I mean, that prime time. Prime time. Prime yeah. time. You could yeah. probably sneak something right before May, charter season, yeah, but, right before it. But then you're like cutting yourself short, sure. I feel. Yeah. It's, that's why I've never, you know, I've never gone. He's like, you got to come. I'm like, explain to me how I'm going to take a week off in July. I know. And, and then I'm going to be frenzied out when I see like the water moved in. Yeah, and we're sitting in a land. You're off rhythm. Yeah, yeah, catching, you know, because you know you're going to catch salmon too. Yeah, yeah. You yeah. got to catch everything you're there. You got to do the whole bucket list of like yep. rock fish to just catch one of everything. Yep. You know, and hunt there too. I'd like to do both. It's sick. The wildlife out there is unbelievable. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm good on the hunting. Yeah. You know, I like killing animals. I don't like. You don't like land animals? Nah, I'm good. <laughs> I feel like if you started, oh, I, I'd, be, be, I'd be done. So it's like everyone's like, why don't you do this? Because that's all I would do. Right. You know, that's yeah. all I would do. Or would be just like you You guys have a nice place here a, in Long Island. There's huge deer. Massive. 170s, 160s. <laughs> yeah. Massive deers. And like we see them all the time. They're like our, on the way to the boat in the morning. We have... I mean, they're massive animals. Yeah, you know, massive. yeah. Oh, yeah. I've seen some. Yeah, one hundred and sixty. Yeah. I'm like, I'm like, how big is that thing? I'm yeah. Like, and then you hear like, oh, I saw an elk today. Yeah. I'm like, it's not an elk. <laughs> you know, yeah. Yeah. And they're everyone's pets because everyone on Long Island feeding the goddamn thing apples. Yeah. And they're so trained, you know, and you could literally just walk up to it and just stroke it with it, like seen from Predator. You know what I mean? Like, <laughs> that would be me. I'm like, oh, here you go, little fella. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> you know, like the. You know, the, the guy at the end when he's standing uh, on the lock. That would be me. Like, oh, yeah. yeah. You know, yeah. oh, I'm right on the apple organ. Oh, okay. I'll feed you all winter. <laughs> you know, full blood underneath oh, the yeah. eyes. Oh, Ram- totally. Type Rambo type thing. Totally. You know, it's a dick. It's it's just something you're... You don't need any more addictions. No. No. You're a hunter-gatherer type individual. It's this. It's so Just similar. like fishing, it's just it's different. So and you, you got to focus your yeah. time in yep. on... And obviously, yeah, well, it's, you got to, just like fishing, got to put the time in, spots, right? Boat preparation, you got to be practicing during the summer. And yep. It, it's, it's I all can see, same. it's just a, it's all the same. It's just a different, it might be a little bit cheaper than offshore sport fishing. It's more accessible. Definitely cheaper. Yep. Yeah. The way they behave is kind of similar, oddly, like just movement and topography and structure and all that moon, and the moon right the moon's a big so there's science that's like the moon doesn't but then there's other guys that are like 100 percent just this like moon fishing. phase Same people think fishing. moon does nothing but yeah i think it's like everything yeah, yeah i'll things. argue someone until they're dead in the face <laughs> yeah <laughs> you know what i mean like yep. oh, you know what stop stop believing anything yeah. you know what don't right. go the moon yeah. 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 yeah go right on the night of the fall of the night you know it's all sure the, the sun t- uh, yeah I'm sure the tide doesn't run hard on the moon what's know? crazy actually is the amount of times I've seen, and I've been doing this, you know, I've barely scratched the surface, but in talking to buddies and people that have been hunting a long time and then fishing and all that, it's crazy how I've noticed movement during tide change times. It, it's, a, it's, it's like a, moon, moon overhead, moon, moon, you know, underfoot. Yeah, exactly. Pay attention to a major and yep. minor. I got it. Uh, my buddy Eric Fawcett runs a Floridian. When we were sword fishing one day, and I'm like, all right, coming up on the major, gonna get a bite. And within two minutes, there he is. Yep. And he goes, wow, you really know this. I'm like, no, I could read the app pretty good. You know? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> it, it's the same thing here. Majors, yep. minors, when you pay attention and you, and Stancic told me that a long time ago. I mean, he's a very good sword fisherman. He pays attention to all those little things. Like, you know, they get actively feeding, and same goes for a commercial fisher. Mm-hmm. Everything gets active during that period. You know, you have highs and lows, and they have charts, and and it all overlays into each other. Yeah. Venn diagram. Again. <laughs> there yeah. you go. You know, that's the only thing I think I ever learned in grade school, those three circles. <laughs> <laughs> we all it's like, actually two circles. Mine up three. Mine up three. three. I was like, <laughs> oh, I love it. I love it. Venn diagram. That might be the other podcast. <laughs> oh, yeah. boys, we've yeah. been going two hours. All right. well, this has been awesome. You can do four easily. I can make you guys laugh all day, day. dude. I could sit here and talk to you guys about this shit for fucking days. <laughs> but we'll we'll uh we'll get you down, and I'm sure uh 
I'm sure Mike would like to have you guys on the boat. I would live, I mean, from, live from the canyon. Yeah, it'd be awesome. That'd be, it'd be awesome. He's throwing his hands already. He's already sick of us. He's already fanned us. He's not the talking. He's not talking. Yeah, just have I don't us know there to do commentary. Like, just whispering. <laughs> He's not talking. Yeah. His hands are high. I see that people. He's in a very, yeah. in a very frustrated state right yeah. now. Yeah. I would be. Oh, that's yeah, because I'd be nervous. You guys are there, and I'd be yelling at you. Like, don't touch that. You know, <laughs> I don't care how many bluefins you say. Yeah. You know, this is not your home. My home. <laughs> your home. My home. My home. Yes. Out of that. You know? Don't even look at my pink bomber. Yeah. No. Nope. <laughs> that would be fun to do, like our one annual canyon trip with them. Yeah. Be a blast. Yeah. Would that be fun? fun? Would it be fun though? I think so. Yeah, I think they'd fun. know that. Yeah. It'd be fun for it'd have to a be, few you know, minutes. I'll, I'll even do it. it have to be during, like, obviously a closed day because I'm sure you have good charters that want to kill one of those things. But or late like season. A, a late yeah, season. season. Yeah. September, something like borderline weather where you, you're already burned out of bluefin yeah. fish. You're like, I need to do something else. I yes. can't do this anymore. September, it's like fucking frothing to go do something different. Yeah. I mean, because some the way our weather is, we go, right? You guys go 30, 40 days in a row, and then we get a week of bad weather. Yep. You know? Yep. So, and that's when you got to leave. We leave, of course, on bad weather. I like bad weather. Yeah. No one else likes bad weather. <laughs> but you're also in a fucking big Viking. Yeah. You know. But we're the little, we're a little boat. We're only 52. True, but true. It's a, it's a little boat, little boat that could, I can tell you that. I feel it's safer a, in my boat than, than most. Squatty. It's a yeah. squatty hull. And it's a very good hull. And there's low center of grab. And we've been in some hellacious weather. Yeah. Like weather, I should be like. <laughs> you know, like I only like this on my gill betters, but this is not good. You know, like this is not. You know, it's it's nothing you could do. It's yeah. just you deal with it, and and you can't force your way out of it. And oh well, you know. But you fish right through. It doesn't rock. We don't have a sea keeper. You know, <laughs> so I don't none of that nonsense. It's just gonna break anyway. It's gonna rip out of the boat. Yeah. Or the orb's gonna break. Have you seen the video? The one that just takes off <laughs> and like destroys the inside yeah, of the boat. Are, yeah. <laughs> That's my biggest fear. Why? First of all, if it's that rough, I don't want to be there anyway. Yeah. <laughs> There's, you know, and no one's getting a sense, you know, a sense of false sense of security going with me. Yeah. We, we're we're all getting the shit kicked out of each other. All right. Yeah. If I'm thinking of eating driving for twelve hours, yeah. you're damn well sitting on <laughs> either side of me taking it as well. So, oh, that's yeah. funny. Been fun. It's good seeing you guys. Good to see yeah. you too. Thank awesome. you guys so yeah, much. Absolutely. Excited to talk more this weekend. Um, yeah. This no, I'm pumped. I feel like yeah, we do this and then we say hi to Mark like three times. He's running yeah, we, around 90 yeah. miles an hour. Running 90, you know, people want to know. Mark's like, sweating. Yes. Yeah, you are. You do sweat a bit at Castafari. It's a, it's a lot of talking. <laughs> <laughs> David's got me talking for 13 fucking hours. You know. In a row. You know, like, oh, oh, Mark, you don't have anything on Saturday, but Sunday you got to speak from 8 a.m. to 5 p.m. straight, and you have one break, and you know, try to eat lunch, and you're literally trying to hide in, in your booth or someone else's booth, and someone who doesn't want to ask a question, I don't know, get in front of 150 people, yeah, like try to eat something. They see you're eating, you know. Mark's pissing in a bottle of yeah, like, <laughs> and, and every year, you know, David, oh, I, I I tailored your schedule pretty good. Really, David? I don't present anything till 5 p.m. on day one. I got to rig bait, and I got to shower because the bait room's disgusting. We're rigging bait for the first time this year. Yeah, that's good, though. Yeah, yeah. yeah, it'll be fun. Yeah, yeah. we're excited. Um, Damon's gonna love that. Yeah, just yeah. razzing on him. Oh yeah. Oh, that's good. Your father's three words. Yeah. The, the hook in the water. <laughs> yeah. The one thing I was taught by Captain Phil, sometimes we take our hooks out of the water. We do too. All right. We do too. Yeah, that's always been like a, a catchy thing of mine because Phil, I, Phil doesn't listen to these. Who knows what he's doing? You yeah. Know? But he told me we can't get a bite sometimes. And we've seen it with the elephants too. And take the rods out of the water. Yep. And it's ballsy. You know, they see the line, whatever it is. The weight, keep, whatever. Keep drumming. Yep. Get them happy like a dragger does. It's definitely situations where we do that. Overall. Yeah, overall. Overall. You know, the guy who's paying a lot of money to come fishing. Yeah. Take it all out. Let's hang out for a bit. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Uh, you guys, what, what do you want for the grill? <laughs> yeah. I'll, I'll start cooking. Yeah, you know? yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, so, thanks, boys. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Appreciate that, it. Was, yeah. Back to OG's three words of wisdom we'll end it on. Uh, remember, you can't catch them if you don't have a hook in the water. Always trust your instincts. And the last one, you'll have to keep listening. Stay tight, everybody. 
Thank you very much for tuning in to the Sea Rose Fishing Podcast. If you would like more information about today's guest, our episode, and show sponsors, or if you want to order hats and apparel, please visit our website at seabrosfishing.com. You can also stay up to date in all the latest Sea Bros Fishing content and podcast episodes by following us on Instagram at Seabros Fishing. Finally, to book a trip with us through our family run charter fishing company, please visit massbayguides.com or see our latest updates and fishing reports by following Mass Bay Guides on Instagram and Facebook.